Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following ABC Sports exclusive. This year's Sugar Bowl has got to be probably the big, not probably, got to be the biggest football game Penn State's ever played in it. Uh, we've not had a chance to win a national championship on the field of play. This is our first time. How important it is, I don't know, but we really like to get one. <laughs> Maybe the next one won't be quite as tough. For me personally, I don't think it means as much as it does to the seniors on this squad. This is going to be their last chance to get it done. Hopefully, I'm going to be around long enough that maybe we can win one down the line. But we should like to get this one. Well, to win the 1979 Sugar Bowl would mean a great deal to me. I shouldn't be that selfish. That it don't really mean to me because uh, it's just another big football game as far as I'm concerned. But uh, where it would really mean something is to the players because uh, well, we recruited most of those players, well, all of them. We asked them to come here with the, the goal of winning the championship, and we've been close but haven't won yet. And they had, they fought awfully hard to come back this year to be in the position they are. And to see them go out and win it would make me very, very happy, and I'd be proud of the rest of my life. The 1979 Sugar Bowl. Matching. Two teams battling on the field for the game that could mean the national championship. Number one ranked Penn State Nittany Lions, number two ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. And it'll take place right here in one of the pieces of construction that's been called the marvel of the decade, the Superdome. Inside, warm and dry. Outside, cold and wet. Penn State and Alabama in the Superdome in New Orleans. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the folks at Chevrolet, who invite you to come on into your Chevy dealers coast to coast for a look at an all-star lineup of cars. And by Dean Witter Reynolds, one investment firm you'll be glad to hear from. The Superdome is packed, and why wouldn't it be? Look at this, Penn State, 11 wins and no losses, first in all the major polls, the only Division 1A team to go undefeated. Alabama lost one time to USC in Birmingham, but since that time they've rolled them off. This is a dream matchup, only the fifth time that one and two in the polls have met on the field. The past history of this kind of matchup reflected there. The Rose Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the last time it happened was the 1972 Orange Bowl. The bands, the people, the flavor, the ambiance, call it what you want. Let's call it, for the sake of one word, spirit. You'll never find a group of people more intensely interested than the group of people who are gathered here in the Superdome because so many of them have come from so far away to see their favorite team play. And it's the first time that Penn State really has ever had a chance to go on the field and win their first national championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And talking about this national championship, let's define it this way. If the undefeated Nittany Lions win this ball game today, it seems a virtual certainty they will be accorded the posture as national champions. If Alabama should win today, it would appear that we'll have to wait until all the voting is done in the polls and they are published. Because if Alabama wins today, you know that USC, for one, has a rightful claim for some degree of recognition in that area. You also know that Oklahoma, if they should defeat Nebraska, will be in a position to claim some first place votes as well. So that's pretty much the simplest definition we can give you. But I will tell you this, that when we had the preseason polls before the first game was played, Alabama was picked to be number one and Penn State was picked to be number three. But that was a long time ago. Now we're going to settle the issue on the field of play. And let's begin as Jim Lampley talks with the two quarterbacks, a conversation recorded earlier, Chuck Fusina and Jeff Rutledge. Chuck, from a competitive standpoint, this is obviously the most important game Penn State has played as a team in some time. As you look at it personally, how do you judge the importance of this game for you? Well, without saying it, probably is the most important game in Penn State history, um, being because we have the chance to win the national championship on the field. There have been other big games in Penn State, as in 72 and 69, they've had big Orange Bowl wins. But it, then again, after the wins, we didn't get a number one ranking. 
Uh, we feel at Penn State that if we can win this game, there should be no question that we could be number one. Um, so and therefore, I think we're not only going to be playing for ourselves, but for those teams that just got edged out and for all other teams at Penn State who never got the chance to play for a national championship. So you're playing for the identity of Penn State as a football program in all the years under Paterno and not just to prove that this team is the best in the country right now. I think in a way we are. You know, we want to win this national championship for our team. That's, that's our first priority. But all those other teams that we felt at Penn State were a little slighted. Or, you know, we, we, I think they'll be celebrating this win as much as we will. Jeff, it's an understatement to say that this is an important game. But what does the goal of a national championship and the fact that a national championship may hinge on the outcome of this game mean to you individually? Well, that was the main reason I came to the University of Alabama to begin with, was the chance to play for a national championship. And here it is, my fourth year, my senior year, and it's finally here. And you know, playing Penn State is certainly a, an honor and a privilege to, you know, they rank number one in the nation. And but that's what football is all about, to, to reach the highest possible goal you can reach. And, you know, the winner of this game will probably be the national champion. And, you know, that's what it's all about. That's the reason I came to the University of Alabama. And hopefully when the game's over, you know, I can say I played on the national championship football team. The quarterbacks, Chuck Fusina and Jeff Rutledge, both very good passers, both imaginative quarterbacks. And they have plenty of people to call on offensively. First, let's have a look at the ground troops that Penn State will be showing you today. Number 48, running at tailback, is Booker Moore. He's a sophomore, 207-pounder. He was second on the team in rushing this year with 602 yards, scored six touchdowns, caught 16 passes, and may be the fastest of the Penn State backs. Sharing the tailback work with him is Mike Gooman, number 24. He's a junior, 210-pounder, one of the more versatile athletes on the field. He started last year for Penn State as a defensive back. This year moved back over to tailback where he ran for 351 yards. The fullback, number 32, Matt Sue, and he is the tough runner. Ran for 720 yards. He's also a good receiver with 26 catches. He scored seven touchdowns this year, and he's a little quicker than the first glance might reveal. He does have 4-5 speed. Moving to the wide receiver position, you have an outstanding athlete, number 46, Scott Fitzke. He holds the school career record for touchdown catches with 11. He is also the team punter with a 36-yard average, and he is very dangerous when he goes deep. Now, there is another young man who wears the number 10, who has to figure heavily in everybody's plans. Look at the stat, 18 out of 19 within 40 yards in the field goal. Holds virtually all of the kicking records. Alabama? Good ground troops there, too. For example, let's look at the left halfback out of the wishbone. They call him Touchdown Tony Nathan. He's homegrown right in Birmingham. He is just three yards short of his 2,000 mark for his career, and he has played a lot through all four years of his career. Very steady football player with enormous ability, and he can break the long run almost anywhere and any time. At fullback, starting is Steve Whitman. He's a big, solid fellow at 235 pounds and a very good blocker. But he's finally playing on healthy legs for the first time in a long time, and he is double trouble pounding up the middle. There is a youngster on the right side of the wishbone, number 42, a sophomore, Major Ogilvy. He has delivered so many big plays for Alabama this season. 186 pounder, but he runs harder than that. He's a very difficult fellow to bring down. Wide receiver number four, Keith Pugh, one of the most acrobatic people I've ever seen at this position. He had 20 catches this season, and he will share the work at wide receiver today with senior Bruce Bolton. Those are some of the offensive people, and right now the Nittany Lions of Penn State have entered the Superdome, led by their coach, Joe Paterno. you can see the Lions started slowly tough game against Temple along the way they had some other tough moments but toward the end of the season they were very solid beating good football teams and here comes Alabama coach Mike Paul Bear Bryant lost one time to USC in the third game of the season 24-14 won all the rest of them had some close calls, but the Bear praised his young people for their audacity. 
for the willingness to ignore the circumstances that made life difficult for them and they just kept on winning and here they are with a chance they feel to win a national championship. Working with us as analyst and commentator today Mr. Frank Broyles and Frank we've talked considerably now about the offense but you and I both know that Joe Paterno and Bear Bryant build their football teams on defense. Well Penn State is the best defensive football team in the country. The reason is if they play hard and aggressive against the run in fact they try to shut it down completely and when they do watch out here comes a big rush that demoralizes most offensive units but I should point out that this is the first time in three years that Penn State has faced the wishbone attack. We have three All-American defensive tackles out on the field today. Two of them play together in the Penn State line, Matt Millen and Bruce Clark. General Bob Nalen of Tennessee, Keith, used to say that the Lord is on the side of the team with the two best tackles. And these two at Penn State are outstanding. They can disrupt any offensive running attack and then put extreme pressure on the pass. Alabama offers you Marty Lyons and some ferocious linebackers. Yes, Marty Lyons leads the team, strange enough, as a down lineman in tackles at 112, and Barry Krause is also an All-American, and he's big and strong and tough and knows how to play against the run. What then can we expect in the way of offensive tactics? Well, Alabama feels that they must use a variety of formations to play against this strong uh, Penn State uh, defense. They feel like if they can shift and use man in motion, they can keep the defense off balance. And then, Keith, they have a chance to set up the key play in the wishbone attack. That's the fullback handoff. If they don't do this, they cannot have a they won't have a chance to run wide or throw much. One of the things that we have here, other than the fact that we have two very good football teams about to play each other, ranked one two. We have two great coaches across the field from each other. Very definitely, Keith. Joe Paterno is one of the great football coaches this nation has ever seen. He stands for the things that we love in athletics. People admire and respect him. His players love him, and he's a winner in every respect. And Bear Bryant, in the coach's opinion, I think everybody is the greatest motivator of people the game has ever seen. Year after year, Keith, he can come up with a great football team. His teams never see complacency. They give their very best when their best is needed. That's enough conversation. Let's play the game. We'll have the kickoff for you right after this. I can tell by the happy mood you're in, by that ever widening grin. spot a Dean Witter smile a mile away. And the more you know about all our investment services, the bigger your smile is going to get. You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. You look like... Here's the new Pennzoil that saves gasoline. And Kenny Stabler, quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. New Pennzoil PZL. The Pennzoil that saves gasoline. That's right. You know the Pennzoil in this can? It really does help you go farther on a gallon of gasoline. And it saves you oil changes, too. They call it Pennzoil PZL. I call it a winner. I get held up every morning, waiting for my roll-on antiperspirant to dry. Look, roll-ons go on wet. Later, they still stick to your shirt. So I got on the stick, men and speed stick. Speed stick is solid deodorant, an even effective layer of deodorant protection that goes on dry. So dry that speed stick never sticks to your shirt. So don't get held up. Get on the stick, men and speed stick. Here's Major Ogilvy returning it for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Having won the toss, and Ogilvy is brought down by Giuseppe Harris as he reached the 20 yard line. Here is the offensive backfield for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. These pictures were taken at the court of two sisters. The quarterback is the senior, Jeff Rutledge. Tony Nathan opens at halfback. Major Ogilvy is the other halfback. And Steve Whitman is the fullback, and they're all from Birmingham. And Bruce Bolton will open at wide receiver. He's a senior from Memphis. Whitman in motion, the pitch to Nathan, a sweep to the left side. The Penn State defense going with it from the 20. They bring him down up around the 24. The offensive front, the big guys for Alabama's offense, they break down this way. Buddy Adelette, number 78, is a tackle. Mike Rock, 235. Dwight Stevenson, one of the best centers in the country. Vince Booth, Jim Bunch out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. And Rick Neal is the tight end. 
It is second down and six yards to go for Alabama. The ball is given inside to Nathan, and Nathan is up to the 27. We have a big eight officiating crew here working this ball game. The defensive setup for Penn State. Those are the officials, Bill Jennings, the chief, the referee, Cliff Squires, Frank Ellis, John McClinock, Dan Upson, and Ed Shannon. And we have Tony Nathan shaken up on the play. He's coming slowly off the field, dragging a leg. So on his second carry in the ball game, Nathan takes a whack, and Lou Eichner, number 30, will go in the tailback to replace him. Tony coming off under his own power, but he appears to be hurting considerably. So we will watch that development. Jim Lampley is with us on the sidelines, and he will have the information for you. From the 27, it is third down and three. Rutledge gives inside to his fullback Whitman, and Whitman banging away, trying to reach the 30, and it appears that he may well have gotten his first down. The Penn State defensive people up front, it's Larry Kubin, Bruce Clark, Tony Petruccio, Matt Millen, and Joe Lally. The linebackers for Penn State, Paul Suey, Lance Mayle, and Rich Mallott. And the defensive secondary, Mike Gilson, Carl McCoy, and Pete Harris. Pete Harris, top interceptor in the country. Had a great season. The ball is just beyond the 30, where it is first down now for Alabama and Frank Broyles. They were able to get movement that time up the middle from their fullback. Tony Nathan is out of the lineup, dragging his leg. Whitman carries over the left side, and Jeff Rutledge, the Alabama quarterback, took a pretty good lick after he had handed the ball away. The gain is one yard. They're icing down the hip of Tony Nathan, as you see there, so we'll check it. He may have a bruise. He could have a hip corner. Whatever, he's out of the lineup. Eichner in motion. Rutledge rolling for the first pass. Bruce Clark throws him down, and Rutledge unloads it. And there's the big guy we were talking about. the 31-yard line, as you see the big guy just roaring through, and it's a virtual impossibility, and we've got a little trouble with Frank Rawls' microphone here right now, but it's virtually impossible to block him one-on-one. -on -one. Bolton comes out of the lineup for Alabama. The wide receiver now is Keith Pugh, number four. It is third down and nine from the 31. Rutledge, with an obvious passing down, gets good protection, throws it to Eichner. Eichner comes across the 37, but he is cut down there, unable to reach the first down marker at the 40-yard line. So good defensive flow by Penn State. And now Alabama will come up with the first punt. I believe that uh, Rutledge got a good taste of what the pass rush that Penn State has had all year long. It's devastating. Mike Gooman and Matt Suey double deep to receive the punt of Woody Humphrey. The left-footed kicker. And the beauty. Gooman over, calls fair catch. Humphrey knocks it out of bounds. Or, no, it kicked back inbounds and continues to roll downfield to the 12-yard line. He was looking for the coffin corner. He didn't get it, but he got it deep enough. At the 12, here's Jim to tell us about Tony Nathan. Take a look at Tony Nathan along the sidelines. He's still being worked on by Alabama trainer Jim Goostry. They say it's a bruise in the top part of the hip. He doesn't seem to be hurt on the outside part of the hip in the hip pointer area. They're putting ice on him. They hope he'll be ready to go back in and play shortly, but they're not certain how long it'll take. Bear Bryant came over and took a look. Thank you, Jimmy. First down from Penn State, their first possession. Mike Gooman out of the tailback position. Penalty flag thrown by the referee in the behind the Penn State backfield as Gooman cuts it up to the 20-yard line. Keith. Penn State came out in an unbalanced line. The first play of the ball game to try to upset Alabama's defense. The play was successful, but holding by the offense. We told you this is a neutral group of officials. They're all from the Big Eight Conference. The Penn State offensive backfield, let's take a look at them while Alabama discusses the penalty call against the Nittany Lions. Chuck Fusina is the quarterback. Booker Moore will share tailback with Mike Gooman, Matt Suey, the fullback, and Bob Bassett, 
A flanker, Scott Fitzke, the wide receiver, or split in, and the punter. They'll march him off half the distance, putting the ball back very close to the six-yard line, where it'll be first down and 15 for the Nittany Lions. and dragged down by Ricky Gilliland, 92, defensive linebacker, the Penn State offensive front. Herb Pankey is a tight end, uh, converted from tackle. Keith Dorney is the big guy up front. Eric Cunningham, Chuck Corral is the center for Penn State. Jim Romano, a very good sophomore guard. Jim Brown, a very good sophomore tackle. Second down, and about 13. The ball goes to Matt Suey to the sideline. Hard to bend Suey back, but that time Alabama got enough of him to hold him right at the 15-yard line. Coming across Marty Lyons and Wayne Hamilton to make the tackle. Hamilton and De Niro are the ends. They're both playing less than full. Marty Lyons and Byron Braggs the tackles, and the Warren Lyle to freshman is the middle guard. The linebackers are Barry Krause and Ricky Gilliland. The defensive secondary for Alabama, McNeil, Crumley, Legg, and Harris. Jim Bob Harris is a freshman, replacing uh, Ricky Tucker, who is out with injury. Chuck Fusina on an option, chooses to pull it down, gets it out to the 20, fumbles the football. Alabama's defensive uh, flow, fierce. Penn State does retain possession. Keith, on a passing down, Alabama went to double coverage. Here's the rollout pass. They had one receiver deep, one short, both covered. Fusino had to turn up the field, run the football. The ball was knocked loose, but they did recover. McGriff knocked it loose. Goodman recovered it. And Ogilvy's back to receive the punt from Scott Fitzke. Gets it away. And Major calls fair catch for Alabama up at the 44-yard line. So the Crimson Tide will have good field position for their second offensive possession of the ball game. The more foreign car prices go up, the more it pays to put your money in a Chevy Chevette. It's like money in the bank. Here's what makes it such a value. This Chevette four-door hatchback has standard white stripe tires, body side moldings, AM radio, sports steering wheel, console, reclining front bucket seats, and more. Yet Chevette is hundreds of dollars less than Toyota, Datsun, or VW Rabbit. Chevy Chevette, it's like money in the bank. From Berkeley to Boston, they know the best call on any day. It was open the last time. The beer gone. makes it good. You said it. There's no debate. Beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great. Eleven million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Since 1849, there's no debate. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Schlitz makes it great. Tony Nathan has been wrapped a little more, and he's been jogging around. Now you see him running, loosening up, well back of the bench to see how the hip feels it's in the hip area and as Jim Lampley told us a bruise not a pointer so we expect that we'll see Tony again before this ball game is done first down Alabama from the 44 yard line no score first quarter Rutley options outside he's in behind the line of scrimmage by Joe Lally number 84 there was good pressure from the inside, Frank, and here come the Penn State defensive ends. We saw these two fellows against Maryland have big ball games, Cuban and Lally. Well, Joe Baterno, he has always believed in forcing the offense. He, on early downs, he's going to play aggressive and put all the pressure he can. Lally came flying across on the option play and collision the ball carrier for a loss. An outstanding play on his part. Tony Nathan is back in the lineup for Alabama at left halfback out of the wishbone with Whitman the fullback and Ogilvy on the right side. Rutledge looks, throws back across the field, set up a fullback screen over there with Whitman carrying. He's across midfield and for the first time, Alabama is playing football on Penn State's end of the field. Tremendous blocking by Adelette and Brock. Watch them, 78 and 70. Keith, this is a misdirection 
screen. The key to it is the acting of Rutledge going all the way over the right, throwing very dangerously across the field, but the defense had reacted as they would expect, and Webber makes an outstanding run, lowers his shoulder, gets the extra yardage, and is close to a first down. Just a little bit short as the referee, Bill Jennings, will bring it back into the hash mark. Tony Nathan back in the lineup, having suffered a bruised hip, but he ran on the field, and this is the kind of a football game where you're not going to let a little hurt stop you from playing in it. I'll Absolutely not. You. You're going to be out there if you possibly can. Double tight end alignment now with Neil and Tim Travis in there. Nathan oftentimes is the money man in this call. Rutledge pitches it back. He almost dropped it. Nathan gets outside. He's healthy. First down, Alabama. He's inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. The Alabama backfield, the yardage total may not be that impressive per man, but look at the average per carry. The reason it's not impressive total-wise, Keith, is they have four running backs. Most of the I-formation teams, the tailback, will carry the ball 30, 35 times, but then the wishbone is evened out across the backfield if they have success, and they are good, this Alabama football team. So off a near mistake, Rutledge salvages it, and Nathan gets the first down at the Penn State 39. Jeff handles it clean this time, turns it up inside, and he'll do that. He'll stick his head in there, and especially if those big defensive linemen of Penn State are coming so hard, they overrun him. Keith, it appears that the defensive strategy is bring Millen and Clark through the gap. This is what he did against Texas in the Cotton Bowl a few years ago, and they disrupt anything down the line of scrimmage if you don't double-team them. And those numbers you just saw tell you how stingy they are <laughs> on the ground. It is second down and about seven yards to go, and Major Ogilvy rams it down to the 33-yard line where Bruce Clark makes the tackle. Penn State's defense has five men lined up to play the run on both sides of the football. Here's Clark. You can see the quickness and the agility of this man. He, there was, he was away from the play. No one blocked him. He goes right down the line and makes the tackle. Number 54. He was a linebacker as a freshman, Keith, and started six games. That shows you his quickness. Third down and four for Alabama at the Penn State 33. Rutledge to throw it. Cuban after him, he gets it away, it is dropped by Whitman. Whitman had the ball in his hands. He had Rick Neal there to block for him. He might very well have scored. He looked the other way and didn't look the ball into his hands, and Alabama misses the first down. That was a golden opportunity to make a big play, Keith, and possibly score. It was a wonderful fake by Rutledge, fooled the defense, and Neal was going across the field and was wide open. He threw a little bit on behind him, and Whitman was right there, but dropped it. We've got the field goal try now for Alabama, and doing the kicking will be Alan McElroy. He will hit it out of Kevin Jones' hold. It is a 51-yard field goal try. That's the first time this season that McElroy has tried a field goal of 50 yards or more. He missed it. 7.44 to go, first quarter, no score. No, I honestly do. I honestly like Sears. I wouldn't be here right now, would I? And I do like the Junior Bazaar. They have some really nice clothes. They do keep current styles as far as the clothes. and. Um, since I just got a new apartment, I came here today to shop for everything from curtains to uh, lingerie. Yours is fantastic. Sears, 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 where America shops. International Falls, Minnesota. A car sits on a frozen lake. Through January, February, and March. Then... In April, it started thanks to a diehard. The diehard sold only at Sears. Watch World News Tonight, weeknights on ABC. Inside the Superdome, 72 degrees. Outside, it's about 50 degrees and raining and kind of damp and cold. But all across the country, there is some real tough weather. 
Dallas, for example, chill factor of minus 10, snow, ice, just about everything you could want that's uncomfortable over there today. The upper Middle West, we're told, is being battered by a winter storm. So we feel very fortunate to be inside the dome for this 79 Sugar Bowl game. Penn State gets the ball at the 33, the line of scrimmage. Since they missed the kick under the rules, they get it back out where it was snapped from. And Fusina goes over the middle. He's got Bassett. And Bassett has the ball first down at the Alabama 49-yard line. Brought down by Ricky Gilliland. 18-yard gain. Keith, that was an outstanding throw by Fusina. He drops back, fakes to the tailback to try to freeze the linebacker. Bassett, number 81, breaking in front of the safety man. Right on target. Turns back, catches it, and makes a big reception. First down just over midfield for Penn State. The first time they've had the ball in Alabama territory. Matt Suri takes a wallop from Gilliland, 92. Just nailed him right on the letters. Alabama's linebackers stack in behind their defensive guards and tackles where offensive blockers cannot get to them. And when you run straight ahead, they are likely to hit you on many occasions, just like Gilliland did right there. A grip, 96, is in at the middle guard position or nose guard for Alabama now. Second down and nine. No contact. Alabama is back. You see a three deep drop for the long pass. Goes over the middle. The pass intercepted by Murray Lay at the 33-yard line. A diving grab by the strong safety of Alabama. The pass was intended for Booker Moore. He scooped it right off the carpet. Here comes Barry Cross, Frank, putting a lot of heat on uh, Fusina. I think Chuck might have had to throw it before he wanted. He ran right through and forced him to move just a little bit to the left, and Fusina was off balance. It would have been better had he not thrown the ball. It was way off target, but look at the inception that Leg makes right phase. All Southeastern Conference this year. At his first down, Alabama. The football is just outside the 33-yard line. Rick Neal, wide to the right. Rutledge stands up and throws at him, and he can't hang on. Behind him, he tried to one-handed Carl McCoy, defending for Penn State. Here again, Bayer says he's going to have to throw play-action passes on early downs to try to keep Millen and Clark from just running back and disrupting his offense. Neal was open, Keith, but he missed it. Six minutes and 40 seconds, and you can see that Penn State has been a relatively careful football team. Only 21 turnovers this season. They don't make that many mistakes. Bolton is wide to the right. Nathan on the left side. And inside to Ogilvy. Good blocking behind the left guard and center. And he crosses the 40 to the 43. Dwight Stevenson, the center for Alabama, number 57, is a whale of a football player. He's a big guy, 6'3", 230-pound junior out of Hampton, Virginia. And he's about as good as you'll see at that position. The Alabama coaches say he could be the best block in the history of their school. And to have him at center is an added bonus for this wishbone attack. Third down, they need a little bit less than a yard. And Rutledge rides to his fullback. And Whitman breaks it. Steve Whitman goes down inside the Penn State 45-yard line. I told you at the very beginning that Steve is playing on two sound legs for a change, and with 235 pounds and a hat strapped on tight, he's tough. Let's look at it, Keith. It's the first phase of the triple option. He's right on his seam path. He can hit the line of scrimmage, but he is a determined football player. 235 pounds, gets in the secondary, and makes a big play. Very key for them to have that success early in the ball game inside. That's the key to the wishbone. 44-yard line of Penn State. Rutledge, second man. Eichner, Eichner. Finds some room outside. And a penalty flag goes down. And on the sidelines, through the flag. Penn State players say it's against Alabama. They're pointing backwards, so that's a tough break for Alabama. Talking there to the defensive captain, that is Paul Suey, the brother of Matt Suey, a clip. Keen yarder coming up against the Crimson Tide. And that gets Bear moving around a little because they seemingly had some momentum going. Two outstanding runs, Keith. Uh, 
by Ogilvy on the high, from the high formation. Tailback, he just cut through there and on his own effort made the play. Watch Stevenson, number 57. He's one of the outstanding blockers. You can see he comes in high on the nose man and keeps his feet. We call that locking on, maintaining position, and not falling on your face. Stevenson is a great one. A football move back to the Penn State 49-yard line now, where it's first down and 15. They're really getting some room over the left side of that Penn State defensive front. Lance Mayo made the tackle, but Ogilvy had a lot of convoy to get him through there. He was from the high formation again, which means that you can turn and pitch the ball. He's closer to the end run. He has great speed and determination. The end run wasn't there. When he turned up, he turned up with a burst of speed and determined to run through blockers, and he did. Ten-yard gain. Billy Jackson replacing Steve Whitman for a play, but Whitman is now back. So you have Nathan, Ogilvy, and Whitman. They break the bone, go to the eye formation, and send Nathan wide to the left side. Ogilvy, spinning around, looked to me like he wanted to work a little flea flicker. I think he wanted to get that ball back to his quarterback, but the Penn State defensive people didn't give him time. Lance Mell, the linebacker, number 56, is an outstanding football player, the leading tackler. He played nose guard last year, so in the line he has a good knack of going through, and he tackled Ogilvy before he could ladle the ball back. He did exactly right. It was a flea flicker play with Neal down deep in the in, behind the safety man. It is third down now for Alabama at the Penn State 42-yard line. Neal goes out as a flanker. Rutledge hands it off inside to the fullback. Whitman reaches the 38. There he goes down in a heap again. Mayo is involved on the tackle along with Bruce Clark, number 54. I feel that they were running on third down thinking that they would get a big blitz and maybe have a chance to surprise Penn State and pop up the middle. But at least they didn't drop back for a pass and get thrown for a big loss like a lot of teams did all season long against this great Penn State defense. Art right, Stevenson has come out now. That means it is punting time, and Don Jacobs, who is a specialist at killing the ball deep, he can hit the knuckleball. Now he comes running up. He goes the quarterback. He's moved up into the quarterback position, and there's a penalty flag, and that's too much time. So here was a gadget play, and he used too much time. He had to get it on a quick snap to get it away, but if they're going to punt the ball anyhow now, I'm sure... It's what? relatively academic. They were going to run a play, Keith. What they were doing, they had gotten Penn State to substitute their uh, punting return team and taken their regular Delay. defense out. And Rinse so up. they were going to down fake a punt, four. run up, run a play, and hopefully make a first down. There's one of the best at gadget plays in the history of this game. Nobody has caused the rules <laughs> to be rewritten more than Paul Bryant. Tell me about it. I've been on the committee. <laughs> Humphrey hits a beauty. High hanger, and it bangs into the end zone. Instead of ricocheting toward the corner, it bounced straight in, a 43-yard punt. We have three minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first quarter. No score. I'm Howard Morgan, the TV weatherman in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have a lot of sun out here. And the Goodyear Tiempo is the all-season tire that runs whisper quiet on sunny days. And on rainy days, Goodyear Tiempo is the rain tire that keeps us moving. In the nearby mountains, it's also a snow tire. Goodyear Tiempo is the rain tire, snow tire, sun tire, one tire that does it all. Tiempo is the original all-season tire only from Goodyear. I've played out of some monsters before, but this one's something else. It's the Terex Titan, the world's largest truck. It's the big daddy in the Terex line of off-highway equipment. Equipment used worldwide for mining, logging, and heavy construction. Whether it's playing golf or moving mountains, you need the right iron. And baby, that's a lot of iron. Woo! <laughs> Penn State's Chuck Fusina, UCLA's Theodos Brown, Charles Alexander of LSU, postseason action on the Hula Bowl Saturday on ABC. Joe Paterno, the head football coach at Penn State University. Fine man. Paul Bear Bryant, almost, well, he's a legend. The head man at Alabama. Penn State's ball, first down at the 20. Bassett goes in motion. 
Made a mistake. The left side of the line jumped Jim Brown, number 75, jumped before the ball was snapped. Illegal procedure against the Lions, and that gets a grimace from the head coach. Worth pointing out, I think, that Alabama against the Penn State defense has run for 67 yards already. And if you remember, Penn State allowed only a little more than 54 per game during the season. In fact, one team, Keith, rushed for over 100 yards. Syracuse got 113. But the reason is, I think, is that Penn State has not seen the wishbone at all. And it takes a little while to get accustomed and adjusted to the speed that the wishbone possesses. First down and 15 from the 15 for Penn State. Same motion by Bassett. Fusina gives to the up man out of the eye. And Suey bangs in there for a couple of yards up to maybe the 18. Call it second down and seven and three minutes to go in the first quarter. And it's a tight, tense defensive football game right now. This both teams, however, have shown us that they have brought some funny-looking plays. <laughs> they both have. Uh, Penn State's been handicapped with two penalties on two of their three possessions deep in their territory. Tough to make a first down after you get a penalty down in danger zone. Second down and 12. You see now. Going to go deep with it. Throwing for Fitzke, and it is incomplete. Defending is Alan Crumley, number 17. He ran all the way with it. They got a little tangled up going down the sidelines, but the official was right with them. You, we can see Fitzke going on the deep pattern. He's going to try to test Crumley, who is noted to be uh, kind of slow afoot, you might say. And you see a little pushing and shoving there. If it's accidental, most of the time, the officials will ignore it unless the ball is right there. It was way overthrown. The officials thought it was not interference. And so for Penn State, it is third down and 12 from their own 18-yard line with two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. We get a new football. That young man there is Ricky Tucker, but he was injured in an easy workout the other day, a freak accident. And he is the free safety for this ball club and a very important figure. And they're going to miss him, I bet you, before the day's done. You've seen it. Does not get back to the 20. So they'll have to kick it away from the 19-yard line as Byron Braggs, a big sophomore, ran down the Penn State quarterback. I think the Penn State coaches felt that Casino was going to have to have a great day hitting the third down passes, the critical situations, but he has not so far in the game. Pitsky to punt. He'll hit it from about his 13. Major Ogilvy is deep. Alabama's going to get good field position here. Ogilvy receiving it at the 42. Knocked down back at the 41. Good. Downfield coverage by the Nittany Lions. 92 Rick Donaldson down there and this Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports Live from Honolulu the Hula Bowl at 4 Eastern 3 Central and 1 Pacific and they have a tremendous gathering of athletes to participate in this year's Hula Bowl just look at those names that's a who's who in college football of 78. Just beyond the 41 of Alabama, first down for the tie. Fullback Whitman is in motion. That is Nathan to the outside. Matt Miller is after him. He outruns him. And he breaks it big. Alabama is running against Penn State. That play goes all the way to the 42. Good for 16 yards. Keith, that was the quick flip, the quick pitch to Nathan. Watch it right here, but you'll see the key is Whitman's block. And the key also being Nathan's faking inside, setting up his block right there by Whitman. Frees him into the secondary and watch him lower that shoulder like a good back should. That's outstanding football player, Tony Nathan, who averaged 6.9 all in his career at Alabama. Rick Neal shaking on the play. He will come off the field, but you can see he's walking easily and is certain to be all right. Tim Travis replaces him, a 212-pound junior from Bessemer. Bessemer's right in the Birmingham area. Nathan now has gained 31 yards on four carries. It is Alabama's ball first down at the Penn State 42 with a minute 34 to go in the first quarter. No score. Maybe a check off and an audible here as Rutledge took a long time, gave it to his fullback, and Whitman takes it to the 38-yard line of Penn State. 
most of the football game has been played on Penn State's end of the field. The reason is that Penn State cannot make a first down while they're deep on their end of the field, and when you punt the football, then Alabama has very good field position. Penn State jumped into a 5-3 on that occasion right now, and that was the first time they've used it, and here's Notre Dame leading Houston 6 to nothing in the first quarter. Second down, 6 from the 38. Got it. Turns back inside. Uh, Fred Ragucci, number 83, defensive end. Keith, what happened on that play is most interesting. I like to point out they went a 5 3 to play before. They hit the handoff. This time they showed him the 5 3, moved over into an overshift, and Matt Millen came flying through and disrupted everything in the backfield. Good defensive call. is back at the 42. Third down and 10. Rutledge. Stumbling coming off the snap. And right there is number 60, Matt Millen, to pounce on him. The loss is back to the 45. And Alabama will punt again. He almost lost it. Yeah, he almost, he's lucky to fall back on the ball in a situation like that. And so the first quarter is history in this 1979 Sugar Bowl game, and there is no score between Alabama and Penn State. We begin the second quarter of play in the game here in the Sugar Bowl between top-ranked Penn State, number two-ranked Alabama. Woody Humphrey is into kick for Alabama on fourth down. Shoots it for the corner. Gets it this time. Beautiful kick. Inside the four. 41-yard punt, and here are the numbers off the first quarter, and look at the yards rushing for Alabama. 81 yards, which is considerable more than any team made last year, excuse me, the average last year, 55 yards. Time of possession, 10 minutes for Alabama, and 36 seconds, only four for Penn State. They've got to make some first downs, and they're down, backed up where it's absolutely necessary. Very careful down here. Bob Torrey, the fullback. Booker Moore is the tailback. Out of the eye formation just outside the three, it's Booker Moore running it up to the five, maybe the six-yard line. He is the quickest of the Penn State running backs. Notre Dame now has uh, moved out to a 12-0 lead in the frigid Cotton Bowl in Dallas as Buchanan has run it in from a yard for the Irish. Bitter cold day in Dallas. At the six-yard line, it is second down and a long seven for Penn State. Double wide to the right side. Fusina gives it to Moore. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Marty Lyons and Wayne Hamilton pouring in to get him inside the five. Here's an All-American at work, number 93, Marty Lyons. Marty Lyons is an All-American football player. You can see him just charge through, trying to get penetration, dies and leaps in a great effort to stop Moore for a loss. Ball is back at the three-yard line, where it is third down. It's actually third and 11 now, as it is at the three, rather than being sort of in between the three and the four. Out of the end zone, it is Torrey and Moore. And Fusina's going to throw it out of the end zone. Now he unloads it to the fullback, Torrey, and Torrey comes out to him after 13. He's going to be close to the first down. Warren Lyles, the freshman nose guard for Alabama, had fought his way through the traffic and was in full pursuit of Fusina in the end zone. And Chuck, calm, poised, uh, senior quarterback, wanted to go deep. Instead, Picked off his fullback, and uh, let's see where the ball is at second on the field. They want to bring the change in. Keith, that shows the poise and the confidence of Fusina. Behind his own goal line, a game like this, he didn't get rattled. He found his alternate receiver, his safety valve, got the ball out to him, and nearly made a first down. Just short. It'll bring up a fourth down, and obviously Penn State will punt. They're not going to fiddle around and give somebody the ball down there at this point of the ball game with 13.02 to go in the first half. 
an interesting thing. Penn State's kick formation caused the Alabama coaches one solid week of preparation to know what they did. They're afraid of a pass, afraid of a run. From this formation, it's not used by anybody else but Penn State in the country. On fourth and a half a yard, Pitsky will punt it. Ogilvy is deep for Alabama. Once again, Alabama should get very good field position. Pitsky's punt. Ogilvy fair catch. First down Alabama at their own 48-yard line. And Penn State yet to really have much field position in the ball game, not giving them the opportunity to unwind their offense. Penn State undefeated four times, never named national champion. Right now, we see for the first time in the ball game, number 10, Stedman Sheely at quarterback for Alabama. Good runner. Billy Jackson, the fullback. Travis flexes out to the left. Sheely pitches it outside. Off on the play as Ogilvy is trapped behind the line of scrimmage. Matt Millen pouring in. Sheely was actually hit. He faked to his fullback and then was hit, but still was able to deliver the pitch. Well, I think most of the time the coaches would ask Sheely when he's hit before he comes out clearly to, to attack the defensive end, keep the ball and take the loss. Don't take a chance on pitching. But Bear Brown has confidence in this young man to put him in a game like this in this situation. He's done it in the past. Loss on the play of three. Second down, 13. Sheely with it. Millen, the two big tackles never gave him a chance to exercise the option. Chief, watch Clark, number 54, just shoot the gap inside the tackle. Number 63, Bunch, is trying to block him to no avail. He has the quickness that when he sees that ball snapped, he can penetrate, and he makes an outstanding play, and I'm sure is demoralizing the Alabama offense at this point of the game. And 60, Millen joins him. So, Stedman Sheely, peppered and salted, it comes out. Rutledge is back in. The football is at the 40, where it is third down and 18, and Rutledge sends Ogilvy in motion. What? Billy Jackson, the fullback, to the 45. That'll do it. And it'll bring up fourth down and a kicking down for Alabama, with 11 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the second quarter. No score. Steve. Penn State's defense have had their backs to the wall a little bit. Field position by Alabama, but Alabama could do nothing with it. Those two big tackles are just as we said. They are sensational. They're also probably getting a little more feel of that wishbone. Yes, it takes time. You cannot practice with a B team and simulate a great team like Alabama. Humphrey's kick. Another beauty. He almost hit the screen hanging in the roof. Suey catches it. Matt apparently hoping that they'd overrun him and he could bring it back, but no way because Humphrey, Woody hung it up there five full seconds. Do you know me? I was the first to climb the highest mountain in the world. But down here, people don't always recognize me. So I got an American Express card because people do recognize this as a sign of success and accomplishment around the world. Sure, it's tougher to get, but that doesn't mean you have to climb Mount Everest to get one. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. From the wheat fields out in Kansas to the city by the bay, along the Mississippi, all across the USA, you're looking at the one for more people by today. This is it, America. Chevrolet. A new Chevrolet, a new generation car bought and embraced by more than a million people in its first two years. Caprice and Impala for 1979. This is it, America, Chevrolet. For the 18th consecutive year, it's the best in professional bowling. Premiering January 6th on ABC, the Pro Bowlers Tour. Bruce Clark there on the sidelines with his teammates, All-American in 1978, and the Chevrolet Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, only a junior. So is Millen, only a junior. All the 
the coaches on the schedule of Penn State <laughs> for next year, trying to figure out right now how to handle them. You know, in the Cotton Bowl in Houston, Houston's on the board in Dallas, I should say, as uh, Davis is thrown to Adams 15 yards for a touchdown in the second quarter. That's a 12-7 ball game in Dallas. 10:42 to go here. There's Big Matt Millen. Penn State still four field position back at the 12-yard line. Fusina stands up to throw. He's got pass it open, but he's running for his life. Now he dumps it. It is incomplete and almost intercepted. Murray Leg made a diving try for it. Fusina running for his life, pursued by Curtis McGriff. And watch it. Fusino's trying to throw the look in pass. They double covered the receiver. They guessed correctly on defense. Alabama forced him out of the pocket. Fusino throws and the ball bounces right through off of his hands up in the air. Watch leg dive. Watch the effort right here. On the right of your screen, he came close. Would have been a sensational play if he could have grabbed it. Penn State has not run more than any in any possession more than three plays. So it's been uh, one, two, three kick. Throw it. The gain is beyond the 15 by Matt Suey, a 211-pound junior from State College, and Mr. Bryant. Thoughtful. His team has had the best of it so far. They were ready to play. They've got good field position. They've been able, with their defense and kicking, to maintain field position and keep Penn State backed up. That's the mark of a good football team. Joe Paterno has sent Bob Torrey in at fullback, replacing Suey. That's the tandem now of Booker Moore, the tailback. And Corey, the fullback, on third down and five from the 17. Alabama expecting pass. Leg drops back into a deep position defensively. The pressure is on. Cross is back from Hamilton. Got him. Wayne Hamilton, number 94, and Curtis McGriff, number 96. The linebacker Krause blitzed and forced him to his right, and he ran right into Hamilton. The strategy key was that they showed the safety blitz. You seen an audible to a pass. They changed and went back and double covered and put on a blitz. They knew he was going to throw the ball. They put on a blitz and got him for a big loss. 14-yard loss. And standing right at the very back of the end zone is Fitzky at the front. Ogilvy to receive for Alabama. Once again, the tie figures to get very good field position. Pressure on. Gets it away. Ogilvy feels it. It'll be Alabama first down at the Penn State 41 with 9.09 to go in the second quarter. And Alabama continues to play on Penn State's end of the football field. This program is special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. In Birmingham, this is TD6. Tide comes up now with the first down at the 41. Lou Eichner and Billy Jackson sitting in the eye along with Major Ogilvy. That's Eichner flexing out of the wishbone. And they give it up to Ogilvy and Ogilvy runs it over the right side of the big center, Stevenson, and moves it down close to the 37 for four yards. Keith, most people try to release their weak side blockers on a play to the left, for instance, but you'd better not do that on Clark. He's right over there. You'd better leave somebody hold to block him. He, however, go back to the very beginning where we talked about establishing the run out of the wishbone, and the key to that is the center's play against the nose guard. And Stevenson's doing the job so far. Here's the pitch. Ogilvy with it. He's inside the 35 to the 34, where Lance Mayo, linebacker, makes the stop. Here we isolate on Lance Mayo, the linebacker, number 56, takes on a block, nearly gets knocked down, but then he scrapes off, makes the tackle on Oakley, Oakley after a nice game. That time, Frank, Penn State had gone to a four-man front. Let's see how they line it up this time. You can see that Alabama is really pounding on the ground. Penn State almost nothing on the ground so far in this first half. And it off to Billy Jackson, and Bruce Clark's got him. Clark and Donaldson, but it was Clark who made the first contact. What do you do with a number 54? He weighs 268 pounds. He's quick enough to play the linebacker. He just walls his way through there and makes the play on the draw play on Jackson. Sensational continued play by Bruce Clark. The football is sitting at the Penn State 38-yard line. It is fourth down. 
and uh, six. I'm free to punt. Well, he's done a heck of a job. He goes toward the other corner this time, but he won't get there. Alabama puts it down. I think it was touched in the end zone, though. And he'll bring it out to the 20. Rick Neal was down there, but he lost his footing a little bit, was wobbling around, and hit the ball in the end zone. 7-11 to go, no score, first half. Settling the national championship on the field of play. Top-ranked Penn State, which has been held to only eight yards rushing so far in the ball game by the Alabama defense. No score, however, in the game with 7-11 to go in the first half. Penn State's ball, first down at the 20. It is Suey and Gooman lined up behind Fusina. And it's Gooman. And Gooman is up to close to the 25-yard line, running over the left side, running behind Keith Dorney and Eric Cunningham. They got some movement that time. Keith on the left side of the line. They moved the Alabama defense back enough for Gooman to see a little daylight. Gooman and cut right through. Gooman, like Suey, a little bit quicker than you really think at first blush. You can see how lopsided it's been so far in favor of Alabama, but there is no score able to penetrate deep on the Penn State defense. Lions yet to get real good field position. And Suey this time gives them a first down. And suddenly they're out close to the 35-yard line with the first down. Now, Keith, they're moving out a little bit where they can set up their passing and maybe take advantage of what the scouting report says Alabama is vulnerable to pass defense. They doubled up that time on the middle guard and rode him out of there, and Suey cut right through the hole, and it's near the 35. Penalty flag. Screen pass for Gooman. It's a big play, but there's a penalty flag. All the way down to the 33-yard line of Alabama. But let's wait for the flag. There's a 31-yard gallop. Murray Leg, the uh, strong safety, was blitzing, and he nailed Fusina after he had delivered the pass. But it'll come back. The referee, Bill Jennings, out of the Big Eight, walking off the penalty against Penn State. Illegal procedure, 31-yard gain wiped out. Beautiful execution by Fusina on the blitz, hitting the back Gooman. Watch Billy it right motion. here. White. Down one. It'll be first down and 15 as you see the replay. Screens are set up by the acting of the quarterback, and Fusina did an outstanding job right there as Romano, the left guard, number 53, was out in front of him to make the block. Mike Clements in at cornerback, replacing Allen Crumbly for Alabama. Bob Bassett in motion for Penn State. Fusina gives it on a draw to the fullback, Suey. And Matt's up to the 35-yard line. That's just beyond the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to bring up second down at about 10. Penn State averaged 25 passes a game for 11 during the season. Alabama coaches thought they might see as many as 40 or 45 because of the vulnerability of their secondary. There's the time remaining on the school board in the Superdome. Torrey is in at fullback now. Booman stays at tailback. Torrey is a 226-pound senior, a little bit bigger. They want him for blocking. Here's Cusina straight back to through. Fumble. McGriff stripped him of the ball. Oh, it's Braggs who stripped him of the ball. Knocked it loose. Byron Braggs. There was almost a crucial turnover. Penn State did recover the football and maintained possession as Romano, a guard in pass blocking formation, saw his quarterback in trouble and came back to get the ball. Watch Cusina. They had the safety blitz. Number 90 is back in there. Forces him out of the pocket. Braggs, number 47, strips the ball loose. And number 53, Romano, the left guard, recovers for Penn State. A very outstanding effort on his part. And the ball is all the way back at the 14. But fortunately for the Lions, they still own it. Got to go to the 40, almost the 45 for a first down. So they need 31 yards. Newman brought down at the 15. Braggs again involved on the play with Krauss 77 hustling over there along with number 90 Boyd. And it's fourth down. And once again, Penn State Spitzky will have to punt. 
from near his own goal line. And once again, Alabama is going to get the ball in very good field position. Keith, I've been a little bit surprised that Ogilvy has made a fair catch on every one of the punts by Fitzky, and he has had some running room. They peel back for a return this time, and it's Fitzky's best punt hanging it high and forcing him to call fair catch. He hung it up there five seconds. It was a 38-yard punt. Alabama's ball, first down at their own 47. I want something to drink. Fiddle with beer? Get away, nebulous. I want something special. Bull. Bull. The Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. It's a special premium brew that's in a class by itself. Magnificent taste, Nebulous. You may have either of my daughter's hands in marriage. <laughs> if you want to change your mix, don't say beer, say bull, bull, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. I can tell by the happy mood you're in, by that ever-widening grin. Your investment program is designed around you and no one else, so you can't help smiling when you hear from us. You look like you just heard from me. Like Some offensive talk on the sidelines along the Penn State bench. They've been unable to get on track. Alabama owns the football right now, first down, and it's close to the 47-yard line. Nathan is on the field, but they're not using him to return punts after he hurt that hip early in the going. Rutledge back to throw. Has good protection, hums it. And it is complete to Bolton. Bolton has it. First down at the Penn State 38-yard line. Here we see Bolton, number 32, going down as if he's going deep. Gilsman has covered him and come close to making a great play. It was underthrown, but Bolton came back and wrestled the ball free and an outstanding play. Here is again a fake of the option play, going to fake the fullback and then throw the pass. Gain of 16 yards, just inside the Penn State 38. Rutledge on the option, wants to throw the screen, gets it away to Whitman. Whitman with three blockers in front of him, goes for the first down. Jeff Rutledge was just planted over there by Matt Miller. But it was Mike Brock and Buddy Adelet out in front of the Alabama fullback, and it's a big play to the 22. If one thing that will discourage a big rush is a screen pass and have success on it, and a screen back away from the flow is very difficult to defend again. Outstanding execution by one Rutledge. See Neal throw the first block, then Adelette, and then Brock. And it's first down at the Penn State 22-yard line. No score, 3.20 to go. First half play goes into the middle. Steve Whitman, the fullback, carries. And he's inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. He got just about four yards on that carry. We'll call it three, and you see now time winding down. But Alabama's getting closer and closer. And most of this first half has been played on the Penn State end of the field. Second down, seven. Rutledge to throw it. Looking for Pugh. Gets his pass off. It is intercepted. Intercepted by Rich Mullock. He may go. Only Ogilvy could bring him down. Only the foot speed of Major Ogilvy stopped Rich Mullock from going all the way. And suddenly, for the first time in the ball game, Penn State is deep in Alabama territory. Watch 54 here. Now they've got two men on Clark. They've got Bunch and Brock. But here's Clark forces the throw, and I know that Rustin pushes. He had it back. Now let's look at it again. Make of the auction play. Here's Clark making him move to the left and throw off balance. Whitman deflected the ball, and Malott makes an outstanding run coming back in deep in Alabama territory. A 55-yard return with the interception. First down Penn State at the Alabama 37-yard line. And don't forget, Matt Barr. Ducina hands it 
Pursuit. And Matsui is hit head on by linebacker Barry Clark. There's Malak who made the interception. That was a great play on the last spot. The heart. 37 yard line, second down and 10. No gain on the carry by Sui. Penn State has not been able to run on Alabama so far. Penn State defense has been the story. You see the straight back. Looks for Fitzgerald. Goes deep for Fitzgerald. In the end zone, it is incomplete. And with him all the way was Don McNeil, number 28. Here we see Fiske running the fly pattern, but Don McNeil, number 28, gives him plenty of cushion, runs right with him, plays the ball. What you want a defensive back to do is wait to the last instant and be sure you jump while the ball's at its height, and that's exactly what he does, and he knocks it away. It is third down and 10 Penn State from the Alabama 37. Tom Donovan is in at the flanker. In motion. You see it a throw. Brad got him and took him right out of field goal range. Byron Bragg made the sack. Big up four from Montgomery. Lost 15 yards. And so Penn State is jerked right out of field goal range. And here's the punt. Pitsky hitting a knuckle ball. And it goes into the end zone. They don't cover it. They're trying to go down, and they went into a quick formation, kicked the ball before Alabama had lined up to return it, trying to knuckle ball it down there, but it took a bounce on the carpet and went in. It'll be Alabama first down at the 20. The big news for 79 is from Chevrolet. The new Chevy Monza 2 plus 2 hatchback. It's more car for less money and a lot more kicks. Now, standard equipment includes tinted glass, AM radio, shift console, sports steering wheel, white striped tires, body side molding, bucket seats, carpeting, the hatchback, and more. All standard and all for less than what last year's Chevy Monza 2 plus 2 would have cost with the same equipment. That's more car, more kicks for less money. New Chevy Monza. Crowded airports can make flying a hassle. As airfares have gone down, airline traffic has gone up. At Eastern, we're trying to solve the problem of overcrowding by adding more people. Over a thousand new employees at airports. Extra agents to shorten lines. More baggage handlers to speed you on your way. Extra people are fine, but it's providing extra personal service that separates one airline from another. So if we want you to fly Eastern, we know we have to earn our wings every day. Penn State's Chuck Fusina, UCLA's Theodos Brown, Charles Alexander of LSU, postseason action on the Hula Bowl, Saturday on ABC. You can see from those numbers that Alabama's point of possession has been much more advantageous than those of Penn State in this ball game. Alabama gaining 84 yards on the ground. Penn State is minus seven on the ground. Chuck Fusina has been sacked three times for 50 yards. Rutledge turns and hands the ball off. They keep it inside to the 21-22. Major Ogilvy carrying. The clock now showing just about a minute to play in the first half. Here was Penn State sitting down on the 37-yard line with a field goal opportunity as you see time called to the Lions to kill the clock. And suddenly the big sack of Fusina by Braggs took them right out of field goal opportunity. This Saturday on ABC, the season premiere of the Pro Bowlers Tour. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Hula Bowl from Honolulu. The Pro Bowlers Tour just goes on year after year after year as one of the most watched of all of our sports programs. Up in the cold country, that's about all you can do. You've got to do something indoors when the snow's piled up. 2.30 Eastern Time. The lights of the Superdome being reflected there. Going back to that lost on a pass attempt by Fusino, I know that he wishes he had gone and thrown the ball away when his receivers were covered rather than try to scramble and make something big because he was in field goal range and they had the, probably the greatest kicker in America could have had a three-point advantage. I'll tell you one thing that. about those lights we were looking at too, Frank, under punts, it's certain positions on that field, it's hard to see it. You really have to be careful. You don't lose track of it. It's second down and seven. 
Rutledge swings it up, and Nathan, he's got two blockers, he's knocked down. At the 28-yard line, Matt Millen coming across number 60, the big 256-pounder from Hokandakwa, Pennsylvania, and another timeout by Penn State with 49 seconds to play in the first half. They moved Nathan out to flank a back for that particular play, the screen. He was lined up, excuse me, wide receiver, and the screen to him, hoping that he could make a run after he caught the football. It'll be third down. They need two yards for the first down as Penn State kills the clock. And you can see the story now on Penn State's points of possession. They have not been particularly good. Keith, in the season-long statistics, Penn State has not marched for a touchdown over 60 yards, but 11 times. So you can see they play conservative, play defense, and kick the ball. And their type of offense, which is power inside, no option play, not a scrambling quarterback, it's hard to have a consistent drive of 70 or 80 yards. They have one left. The scoreboard shows two timeouts remaining for Penn State, but I don't believe that's correct. They have one remaining. No score. 49 seconds to play. Third down and two. Whitman gets the first down for Alabama as he rides it over the right side to the 33. And the clock stopped one more time at 44 seconds to go in the first half. Now let's see if Penn State spends their last time out. Clock stops while the chains are moved in college football. I think. Wind up the clock. It is rolling. And here's Jim Lampley. Keith, I just talked to Stedman Sheely, the reserve Alabama quarterback, a couple of minutes ago. They're having a big problem with Bruce Clark, and they're going to start to double team him all the time. Hand off to Nathan. Seven yard line, the block that broke him loose came from one Dwight Stevenson to Vince Booth. Oh, that was electrifying. Let's see it. Little cross fake there in the backfield. But in seeing this run, you'll watch it. Nathan is wise enough to break out and pick up the block of number 32. Bruce Bolton, his wide receiver, has a chance to go all the way with that block right there. But he gets caught from behind by number 92. Rick Donaldson. Yeah, Rick Donaldson. Nathan now 30 yards on that run. Four carries, 53 yards. 21 ticks remaining on the first half clock. And suddenly it is Alabama now that's down in position perhaps to get three points. Bet Penn State wishes they hadn't used those timeouts and let the clock run out. But Alabama had a little resourcefulness to run that type of play on that situation when they were expecting a pass and playing salt. Alabama calling the time here. They have two remaining. And McElroy on the sidelines is moving around. He tried one from 51 yards and it was short. He has no history from that distance. So they've got to move him down a little bit closer for him to really be in range. But on a day like this and a game like this under these circumstances, you never know how much he's jacked up, how much more he can get. Last night in the Blue Bonnet Bowl, they had a wild one. Stanford beating Georgia 25-22. Here's the pitch to Nathan. He cuts it back into the middle. He goes to the 30-yard line, and Alabama calls timeout. With 15 seconds to play in the first half. Alabama has one timeout remaining. Penn State has one timeout remaining. Rutledge comes to the sidelines to talk to the offensive thinkers, and the most offensive thinker on that Alabama sideline is a man named Paul William Bryant. He is a master of this particular situation. He's been here many times. He has the feel and the sense of a football game, and he's talking right now trying to decide is what's the best way to make seven or eight yards if and put the ball in the middle of the field, getting in the range of their field goal kicker, McElroy. McElroy has tried one time between 40 and 49, his longest being 41 yards, and he made it. If they attempt to pass from here, Keith, and it's incomplete, they would have to kick a field goal from the 36. That would be 46 yards, a little bit out of his range. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a Fireman's Fun flashback featuring highlights of that 1973 Sugar Bowl game, that great one between Alabama and Notre Dame. The football is sitting just inside the Penn State 31. 
is second down and four. 15 seconds to play. Alabama with one timeout remaining. Rutledge on a roll. Looks down the middle, and it is... Mark. His quarterback, Jeff Rutledge, Kevin Jones to hold, McElroy for the extra point try. The first score of the game comes with eight seconds to play in the first half. The extra point is good. So it is the senior split in from Memphis, Tennessee, Bruce Bolton, who comes up with the first big, big play of the game. Alabama had done their homework because Harris, the safety man, came up to pick up the tight end crossing, and Bolton goes in behind him for the touchdown. You can see a sensational kick right here. What an effort. Cradles the ball right in for the touchdown. Let's watch Bolton right here. Goes down deep and breaks across the middle. As I said, they'd done their homework because Pete Harris had come up Number 21, McCoy was trying to cover him right there, man for man, with Harris supporting on the tight end. He could not do it. He's open. The ball gets there just on time for the big touchdown. And it's 7-0 Alabama with eight seconds to play in the first half. Rutledge now 6 out of 10 for 86 yards and the touchdown. They lay the ball down flat. Is it an onsider or will they spin it? Let's see. Whip it. <laughs> Just hope it gets to a lineman where they cannot return it. Hits the chalk on the sidelines. They'll bring it back, mark off five, and kick it again. Pete, I think we ought to go back and mention that Penn State used their timeouts back deep in Alabama territory to try to force a kick, but Alabama made the first down, gave them, an, and consequently a big run by Nathan gave them an opportunity to score. Come on, State! 30-yard run by Tony Nathan was the play that ignited Alabama, put him down in position, but it was a picture play as Matt Millen had the pressure on Rutledge and Jeff just took one half step up, and Millen just missed grabbing him for a loss on the play. A game of football, simply put, is an acquisition of real estate. I've heard it so many times, but it's also a game of inches like so many other sports contests, and that certainly was the result for Alabama profiting from a near miss. Ball is drilled to the fullback, Torrey, up man in the kick-receiving formation for Penn State, and Bob comes back to the 45-yard line, and there's four seconds to play as Penn State gets the ball first down at the 45 with Alabama on top by a score of seven to nothing. They've officially credited uh, Rutledge and Bolton on a 30 yard pass play for the touchdown. Alabama drops back now. They've got two center fielders back there. As Fusina sets up the throw, throws as far as he can, and throws it out of bounds. And time has run out in the first half. Four, Alabama seven, Penn State nothing. Jim Lampley is with their black. Coach, you just made a very big decision that produced a 30-yard touchdown pass. What was your reasoning on second down with 15 seconds left in the half? Well, we were going to try two passes and then go over the field goal. We still had two time. We still had a timeout left. We could always stop the clock, but he was going to throw the ball away if his man was covered. He turned. He had to be wide open. You've been saving that play. Do you think it'll work? Well, we, we ran it once before, and he got trapped back there. But we haven't, uh, we haven't established any any run, uh, ground game. Their line is equipping our line of going 
uh, in the middle. Offensive line, yeah. We, uh, we got to do something about that. Our defense is doing great. Okay, good luck. Thanks for visiting with us. Coach Bear Bryant, who just made the big decision that produced the touchdown, the 30-yard pass from Rutledge to Bolton. We'll be back with halftime festivities from the Sugar Bowl right after this. The halftime show here at the Sugar Bowl has run a little bit long on the field, and both coaches have brought their teams onto the field a good four or five minutes ago. Consequently, the players have been standing around, and as I stand here with Coach Joe Paterno of Penn State, I can tell he's not particularly happy about it. Nor I would assume about your offense in the first half, which yeah, looked I confused. I, I think our defense played well enough if we had any kind of offense, but our problem is they have a couple of new blitzes in there we didn't pick up, and got us a little disorganized. Hopefully, we're going to be a little bit more consistent the second half. You're going to play more aggressively on defense to try to force some mistakes? Oh, I think we're in good shape. We can get some offense going, Jim. Okay, good luck, Coach. Okay. All right, I'm All right, with Jim. Todd if you need him. Thank you very much. Richard Todd is among those uh, down on the sidelines, and we may very well have an opportunity to talk to him. Uh, the last time Alabama and Penn State played here in the uh, Sugar Bowl, uh, Richard Todd was the big man as he led Alabama to a 13-6 victory. So here we go with the second half of play, and one of the questions, Frank Broads, I have for you, do you think that Alabama may gamble a little bit and try to go one-on-one -on -one with Millen and double up on Bruce Clark? Absolutely. I think they're going to have to. I talked to Bo Ryan of North Carolina State about Clark and Millen, and he said if you don't double-team Clark, you'll give you fits all day long, and that's what's happened. I believe Alabama will make that tactical change, and I think Joe Paterno has got to dislodge from his players' minds the disappointments and the frustrations of the offense where they can have some enthusiasm in this half. Alan McElroy, off. Alan McElroy will kick off for Alabama and Penn State's Donovan, Suey, and Coles are deep. He hits it high. Donovan drifts back to the goal line to take it. He's in the end zone, and he'll bring it out to the 20, where Penn State will have the ball first and 10. The offensive back wheel will go with Fusina, Gooman, Suey, Bassett at the flanker spot. And it'll be Fitzky, Dorney, Cunningham, Corral, Romano, Brown, and Panky up front. Penn State wearing the white shirts, trailing by a score of 7 to nothing. There were minus 7 rushing in the first half, and the passing wasn't anything to write home about either. The reason was the safety blitz and the linebacker blitzes confused them and knocked Casino out of his pass pattern. All right, let's see what Chuck comes up with here. He pitches it to Gooman. Gooman coming to the right side, getting some help around the corner to about the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and six as Ricky Gilliland, number 92, knocked him out of bounds. Alabama's defensive front pictured here, and their horses as Wayne Hamilton, who plays a defensive end, Marty Lyons, the All-American tackle, Warren Lyles, the young nose guard, Byron Braggs, who had a tremendous first half, Gary De Niro, defensive end, and I'll say one more time, doesn't anybody ever say hello, Dad? <laughs> Second down and six from the 24. Newman. No sir. Having no part of it, Hamilton just slid off the block and nails Newman. Hit him solid and brought him right down at the 25. The linebackers for Alabama, along with the defensive backs, the backers of Barry Krause, another All-American, number 77, and Ricky Gilliland, 92. Don McNeil is a cornerback. Alan Crumbly in and out of the game. Murray Legg is the safety and a very good one. And Jim Bob Harris, the young freshman, playing the free safety spot in place of injured Ricky Tucker. It is third down and five. You've seen it trying to set up a screen, gets it off to Suey, and Suey is upended by Murray Legg, number 19, who had diagnosed the play and was in exactly the right place at the right time. Fusina had drifted back, and the Penn State people had let Alabama's charge come on through, but Leg was right there. That was a double screen, Keith, where he faked it to one side, threw back to the other, but Murray Leg was right there, Johnny on the spot. New Sugar Bowl attendance record, as you saw reflected there. Pitsky's punt is very, very high, but not all that long, and he doesn't get a roll. It takes an Alabama bounce and kicks out of bounds up at the near the 44-yard line. And so the tide, once again, gets very good field position. The punt actually traveled only 29. It'll be Rutledge, Nathan Ogilvy, and Whitman. These, those are the people we expect. Bolton, Adelette, Brock, Stevenson, Booth, Bunch, Neal. Ogilvy comes to the sidelines now, and Tim Clark, number 80, is in there. So let's see what Bear's going to open with here. Oh, my goodness, he's got three people way out. Here is the gadget play of gadget plays. They go to Clark on a 
the wide receiver screen. There's a penalty flag down, and uh, it's kind of fun, but it didn't gain anything, and probably going to cost him because somebody was out of position. Those are the kind of plays you use on the practice field to keep them interested. On Thursday, Keith, or maybe on Friday before the ball game. Alabama had motion, I think, because they didn't have seven men on the line of scrimmage. And the three men to the right and three men to the left, one of them failed to get up on the line of scrimmage. Bill Jennings, who heads the Big 8 officiating team, will define it for us as soon as he has placed the ball. He's joined by Cliff Squires, Frank Ellis, John McClinic, Ed Shannon, Dan Upson, and Larry Coven. Here's the announcement. I got illegal procedure. Not a man on the line on the red. Down one. <laughs> Didn't have enough folks up on the line of scrimmage, right, Frank? Yes. Well, they're going to try it again. First and 15. This time he goes over the middle with it. It's all right in the hands of Carl McCoy. And he hit him right in the numbers. That was the break that Penn State needed to fire their team up, get them aroused after that first half. Watch Rutledge throw the ball right to McCoy, number 21, right on the numbers. Boy, is he disappointed and is the team disappointed. There he's shaking his head. It'll be second down and 15. Ball is back inside the 39. Rutledge rides it off the Nathan. He had a banged up hip early in the ball game, but uh, he's just grinding his teeth and forgetting it, and he turned in a hard run right there. The defensive front for Penn State now, and we'll give you a close look at these big horses. Joe Lally, who's had a big play in the ball game at end. There's big Matt Millen. And Tony Petruccio, the, that's the chore of going against Stevenson. Bruce Clark, there's big Bruce. And Larry Kubin, sophomore out of New Jersey. The football is just short of midfield, where it is third down and four. Rutledge wants to throw, does, has Bolton, it's incomplete. Again, the ball could have been caught, but it went right through his hands. The linebackers for Penn State, as Alabama gets ready to punt, are uh, these gentlemen. Paul Sewer, the brother of Matt, defensive captain. Uh, Lance Mell, who's played very well for the Lions. Rich Malad, who had that big interception in return. Mike Gilson in the defensive secondary, along with Carl McCoy, who just dropped that interception a moment ago. Pete Harris, the safety. Oh, what a kick by Umphrey. Boy, that's a cannon shot, and it's on through the end zone and gone. A 50-yard punt by Woody Umphrey. 12.43 to go in the third quarter. Alabama leads Penn State by a score of 7 to nothing. For days, you fought the mountain for a 90-ton slab of granite. And now you hold your breath while you bring it out until it swings free and clear. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, time to relax, one beer stands clear. Miller Beer. Chevrolet invites you to think of yourself in a new Monte Carlo. Think of yourself surrounded by crisp, sculptured lines. Think of yourself enjoying the very real pleasures of owning a Monte Carlo. Think of yourself surrounded with personal luxury, quiet comfort, and a surprising amount of room. And when you've thought about it, come drive one and put a little distance between yourself and the crowd. Over in Frigid Dallas in the Cotton Bowl, Houston's uh, Swift Cougars have jumped out to a 20 to 12 halftime lead over the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Penn State trailing 7-0 with the ball. First down at their own 20. Penn State offense has just been stalled. Fusina shoots it, passes it, and it. Brought back by Jim Bob Harris. And here's Alabama knocking on the door. The freshman from Athens, Georgia. There's a penalty flag on the field. Maybe against Alabama. Personal foul, clipping. Alabama. So instead of having the ball down at the Penn State 14, they'll be back up around the 19, a 22-yard return by Jim Bob Harris. On that interception, Fusina 
fake to the tailback, and Fiske is open in the middle, but Fusino has to have lost some of his confidence. He ordinarily would hit him right there, overthrows it, Harris right on the numbers, and the young freshman from Athens, Georgia, a quarterback who led his team to the state championship in Georgia, 14-0 season, makes a fine run, but the clip moves them back. Let's see if we can see the clip. Yeah, I think so, right yeah. back there behind him. Well, whatever, it's all. He was open, Chuck just missed him. Didn't he? Just missed him, that's what happens when you lose a little bit of confidence. Ball is back at the 34-yard line from the point of the foul, 15 yards, and Alabama still in good field position as they give it an eighth, and then he is filled behind the line of scrimmage by Matt Miller. I sort of wondered if uh, <laughs> Alabama decided to double up on Clark and go one-on-one -on -one with Millen if it might not make Matt a little matter. And he might play with a little more intensity. That time he certainly did. He just whipped the blocker and was right there at the line of scrimmage. And when the ball carrier got there, he released from the blocker and made the tackle. Momentum got him two. Second down, eight. Double wide left. Double. They've got three people over on the right side. That same formation. They've got Nathan over here and Clark over the other side. And the penalty flag is down. And they make a get called for the same thing, not having uh, enough people up on the line of scrimmage. Well, Keith, what's happened is two of the men on each side are in the backfield and only one up on the line of scrimmage, and three and two is five. No, so well, they don't call it that way this time, Frank. They go offside against Penn State. Oh, did they? Yep. You sort of get the feeling Bear's been looking at that play and kind of likes it and said, we're going to keep running it until <laughs> you guys get it right. And he's going to throw it out one of these times and throw a lateral to it and make the halfback throw a pass down the field. He's done that before. I've seen it. It was off this formation, though, that Rutledge threw the interception a while ago that was dropped. And I say an interception that was dropped because he hit McCoy Outside. absolutely in the hands. Wait. Offside defined there by referee Bill Jennings, and that'll cost him five, moving the ball just inside the 28. 11.55 to go in the third quarter, and Alabama sitting on a 7-0 lead over number one ranked Penn State. Second man, Nathan, gets the ball into the right side to the 25-yard line. He's got to go just inside the 24 for the first down. So he'll have third and very short. Again, Bruce Clark was in the backfield and redirected Nathan outside. He would like to run over the tackle, but he had to change his course and lost his momentum. You can see that Nathan has gained 84 yards more than the Penn State running game. That's incredible, Keith. It's just nearly unbelievable. Third in the yard. Whitman, the fullback, and he just roars down behind Vince Booth, Jim Bunch, and Dwight Stevenson for the first down. He's like a fallen tree when he gets going. They moved an unbalanced line, which moved Clark, a man wider, where they could run the handoff for the fullback over the tackle, but Clark was out over the end because of the unbalanced line. Well-prepared football team. Nathan limping some comes off the field, and Eichner goes in at the halfback position for Alabama. First down, just beyond the 21-yard line of Penn State. Whitman, the fullback, comes up over the left side this time, and uh, he reaches the 19, running in behind Adelette and Brock that time, or Adelette in particular. Nathan absorbing a wicked blow on the hip very early in the ball game. He had ice and massage and so forth has played very, very well, running for 82 yards, and he produced the big 30-yard run that really set up Alabama's touchdown late in the first half. That was the key run. It's second down from the 19-yard line, and eight. Rutledge in trouble, and he gets planted by a blitzing Rich Malott from the linebacker position. Malott just nailed it. Here he comes, watch number 28. The hole opens up beautifully for him, and he's able to hit Rutledge in the backfield. Right there, 28 on 11. And that was a key play. It made it third and 10. Third down and 10. And let's see what the Bear has suggested to his quarterback. Bolton to the left. Rutledge. Brings it out short to Eichner. Missed by one, and now he goes down. Actually lost on the play, back to around the 24-yard line. Great pursuit that time by Penn State. Long yardage situation. 
Penn State had loosened up their defense and they were ready for a screen of some kind and they played it beautifully. McElroy comes onto the field with his kicking tee and puts it down at the 30 yard line. So it'll be a 40 yard field goal try by McElroy. Trying to make it a 10 nothing ball game. He's one for one at this distance. Longest this year was a 41 yarder. A hole by Jones. Got enough leg. Oh, he missed it. Off to the right. Didn't get any hook in it at all. 9.06 to go third quarter, and it's still a 7 0 ball game. An assortment of signs hanging from the rafters here at the Superdome. Here's one of the more artistic ones there. And here's Penn State with the ball. First down. The football is at the 23 yard line. Fusina is back to throw. Trying to get something going. Going deep. He's got Fitzky going down. And it is incomplete. Depending on the play, Alan Crumley. And Fusina not really able to get enough on it. I think Fitzky might have been able to outrun uh, Crumley on that play, but the ball's kind of hung up in the air. And uh, Marty Lyons, in the meantime, uh, laid the uh, Penn State quarterback on, uh, on the rug. Penn State had gone into two tight ends on this particular play. They have time to throw the ball, and you see that this is in behind Crumbly right here. If the ball had been thrown properly, it would have been a touchdown, but it was underthrown. Crumbly was able to collision the receiver at the time the ball got there incomplete. You've seen it now. It's three out of ten in passing for 30 yards, and he's been sacked three times for 50. Second down, runs it up across the 25 to right about the 30. They may put him at the 29. Mark right in between the 29 and the 30. And it'll bring up third down. Penn State's got to go to the 33. So they need just about four yards. We have a tactical change in Penn State's offense. They're using two tight ends. you wonder how you that's illegal procedure they're whistling here look like Jim Brown moved in the line huh okay well that, that, it, you got to be getting the Penn State people got to be getting a little frustrated on that offensive team they've lost their momentum they've lost their confidence and it just disturbs their faith and their silence their leaders when you have this much difficult penalties now Penn State five flags for 26 yards Alabama five for 40 yards on third and eight Pass thrown to Bassett on the sidelines. He has never knocked out of bounds. It's amazing to me. He held on to it, but he's a very resourceful football player, and it's a first down for the Lions. At that time, Fusina put something on that ball. He rifled it in. Let's watch it again. You're going to see a spectacular catch by number 81, Bob Bassett, right on the boundary, pushing off as if he's going to run deep. He has to turn back. He juggles the ball. He's going to get hit right there by Crumbly, number 17, but he keeps possession. And clearly had uh, the speed inbound. Uh, Mike Rubin carrying the ball over the left side, cutting it back in the middle now as he found a little room as Corral and Romano were able to open the door for it. And he's out close to the 40 yard line. He's got just about four yards on that carry, a little bit more. It's the first time they've really had any yardage on first down, which has destroyed the continuity of the offense. Nothing on first down. Randy Scott's in the linebacking position, replacing Ricky Gillard. Here's the screen set up, and it goes to Gooman, and gooman has got a Penn State first down and a penalty flag on the field. So hang on. If the play stands, it'll be good for a first down. Penn State are moving back. Procedure again. That's a lack of concentration most of the time. Isn't it? Lack of concentration, Keith. And then in this stage of the game, it, it, I really feel that they are stunned a little bit because they haven't had any success. And talking to their coaches at halftime, it seemed that Alabama is disguising or hiding their defense and causing them problems. Backfield in motion, second down and 11 for Penn State. The football is near the 34. You 
Cena will throw. Throws it short. Pass is complete to Panky, the tight end, and Irv is up to the 39 and then driven back. So that's well short of the first down. It'll bring up third down, and Joe Paterno sends Tom Donovan in with the play. Give Panky on the pass reception, the 40-yard line, where it's third down and five. Alabama blitzing, they had red pass, Scott's after him, Cusini's pass is away, and it's underthrown as Randy Scott was blitzing, and he got there. They had three people coming, it was 50 that made the contact, and so Penn State will have to kick it away. Coaches understand, if you don't have an option play, running mostly power, you can blitz on most any occasion, and that on that occasion, Penn State did not pick it up. Those are astounding statistics. Seventh punt of the ball game for Fitzky. Hangs it up. Eichner watches it and goes out of bounds. So Alabama will get the football at the 28-yard line. On Saturday, January 13, the Pro Bowlers Tour, and then we'll have for you the World Gymnastics Championships. That's at five Eastern and Pacific. And the Americans, of course, I'm sure you are aware that our gymnastics group looking very well in international competition right now, pointing toward the Olympic Games. But you'll enjoy it on ABC, Saturday, January 13, following the Pro Bowlers Tour. All right, Billy Jackson is in there at the fullback position, along with Nathan. And Jackson carries a 196-pound sophomore from Phoenix City. Got a yard. It'll be second down and nine at the 30 for Alabama. Got about a yard and a half on the carry with 6.17 to go in the third quarter. Alabama 7, Penn State nothing. Tough physical football game. Rutledge outside to Major Overby and Bango. Penalty flag is down as Joe Lally came across to make the defensive play from his defensive in position. So let's read the flag here. Paul Suey, defensive captain number 65, talking to the referee Bill Jennings. So obviously the penalty call is against Alabama. And he's giving him uh, the option of it because there was a loss on that play. I had motion on the red club. Decline. Down his third. The an interesting call here, Keith, is whether they'll put the ball in the air or try to run a safe play like a draw on option. The way Umpke has been hunting, he's uh, becoming a bigger weapon all the time. Oh, they're going to put it up. Intercepted by Pete Harris, who led the country in interceptions this year, his second marvelous effort by Harris. That's Franco Harris, his younger brother. Keith, that is what defensive coaches say is a sensational play because Clark is open momentarily, but while the ball is in the air, watch Harris come right in front. Look at the ground he covers while the ball is in the air. That's why he intercepted 10 passes this year to lead the nation. Here's another run of it. It's out pattern. Clark number 80, he's open momentarily. Sensational play right in his hands. Back to live action. That's uh, Bob Torrey. A pullback carries the ball right up the middle. It was first down, Penn State at the Alabama 48-yard line. Now on the carry by Torrey. The ball is advanced to a 43 with a better part of five yards. Call it second down and a little more than five. And Donovan is wide to the left side, and he is really quick. But they come back to the tight side. Booker Moore carries and goes nowhere. In fact, Booker lost a yard. I don't know who put the defensive plan together for Alabama, but whoever did it borders on pure genius. I agree with you. I talked to their defensive coaches, Keith. They said they took the last game that Pitt State played, charted it, and went back each play until the, each game until the first game, and by then they knew exactly what they wanted. 
Of course, it does help to have people like Marty Lyons, number 93. Just an All-American, 112 tackles for a defensive line, and that's sensational. Ball is at the 44, third down and six. Fusina wants to throw, goes to Gooman. And Mike Gooman, who consistently figures in big plays for Penn State, takes the football inside the 20, a 24-yard gain. First down, Penn State. And the first real threat of the ball game by the Lions. It's a double wing formation, and Gooman was lined up at the Gooman was lined up at the wing back. He's wide open because the defensive end rushed. No one there to make the play until McNeil, number 28, and Harris finally get to Gooman. Just inside the 20, first down Lions. All given to Gooman. Gooman dies. They'll give him to about the 17. Better far to three. Second down and seven coming up. Interception pass by Harris setting up this golden opportunity by Penn State. Turns the momentum around. Joe Paterno shuffling his tailbacks as Gooman leaves and Moore comes in, number 48. And we're reaching the stage of this ball game, I think, where you get to deal with one of those things that coaches love to talk about. It's that old bottom line thing called character. On the 17th, you've seen it to throw it. Throws into the end zone. Touchdown. Butchby had one foot in the end zone as he caught the ball. right down to the bottom, man. It just passes right down the line. Everybody pushes for quality. Willie Rawls, utility man. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. My job is to replace uh, any absentees from here, there, all over the plant. Yeah, you know, you're not tied down to one job all the time. You're around different jobs. Metal finishing, welding, soldering. But soldering, I think I enjoy soldering more than any other job I've done because there's a lot of skill in that. Yeah, the fellas keep something going all the time. They, it's never dull around there. Yeah, they get along very good. Yeah, union's, union's good. Yeah, the people on the line, they have a lot of interest in the car. If I go out to buy a car, that's where I go, looking for a uh, gentleman's car. Because I'm right, at, right there in the plant and I see how they're built, you know, and see the closet that goes into them. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Here's the man that made the play, wide receiver Scott Fitzke, the blue and white, rolling. And here's the kickoff as Matt Barr hangs it a mile high, drives Ogilvy into the end zone, and Major will stay there. And Alabama will have it first down at the 20, and here's a different angle look at the touchdown. You see is dropping back, looking outside, but Fitzke had lined up at tight end. His looking to the left drew the safety man, Harris, over. He was called out of position, but watch this sensational catch. His left foot comes in the end zone. Legal touchdown in college. One foot is all that's required. So that point is well documented, lest uh, Alabama faithful would doubt the veracity or the completion of the play. But it was, for a fact, good by about two feet. And the play over the right side. 
as Alabama running from the 20 yard line Whitman carrying and here's him one more look at a spectacular touchdown play by the line give Joe Paterno credit for the strategy of lining up this kid tight in where he gets a little bit lost going down the middle as you cannot see a safety man where did he go where is the safety man he was fooled on the play as you can see right there Ricky Tucker the starting safety well, man actually was uh, looked to me like because he was lined up at tight end a linebacker had the assignment of cover him and couldn't do it Ricky yes, Gilliland just couldn't stay with him here's Rutledge And suddenly, here comes Matthew. Didn't I say the Lord's on the side of the team, the two best tackles? Look at the isolation right here. He slants inside, comes back up the field, squares up his shoulders, and makes the play on Rutledge. Great piece of camera work. Our director, Andrew Sedaris, the guys who've worked with us all through the season. Ball is back at the 17. State defense is just raging right now. Millen again, number 60. Boy, is he fired up. There's a penalty, gave, but I believe that Alabama was not legally set one second. But in any event, Millen shows what we talked about. He can get cranked up, too. It is now up to Alabama, having committed a mistake there as an illegal motion, to regain their poise. Absolutely. They've become a little bit rattled here. That touchdown shook them up. They had everything going their way. Running time for Umphrey with Sui and Gooman deep. There's the time remaining, third quarter. A lot of time left. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Number one, Penn State. Number two, Alabama. The 45th Sugar Bowl game. Humphrey, another beauty. Oh, has he had a day punny? Sui backs up at the 30. And down at the 32, it was a 51-yard punt. Hang time, five seconds. And this Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will feature the Hula Bowl from Honolulu. At 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and 1 Pacific with a tremendous collection of athletes from across the country. So many schools represented, and everywhere you look on the roster, you find absolute quality. We'll have a lot of fun Saturday afternoon in Honolulu. Booker Moore and Bob Torrey are the setbacks now behind Chet Fusina. That rolls out, gets in the clear, and then misses Fitzky on that roll play. Now, this, frankly, is a play that I'm surprised we haven't seen more of because it is on that side of the defensive alignment where Alabama has been hurt by injuries with E.J. Jr., John Morrow, and uh, Ricky Tucker all would be playing. That's the first time, Keith, they put two receivers to that side, as you yeah. mentioned, and they had uh, one of them open. Mike Clements, number 43, has had to move in there and uh, work there, so I'm sure that Fusina has got his eye on him, but in the meantime, he hands to his fullback, and uh, Bob Torrey just disappears underneath big old Curtis McGriff. Curtis is 257 pounds from the fine little town of Cottonwood, Alabama. Keith, the Alabama defense has been sensational. Just all game, all the game. Third down now, and they need a little more than seven yards to keep possession of the ball. The score's tied at 7-7. Both touchdowns were purely spectacular. That's Bassett wide to the top of your picture, out of the picture, and Yusina's looking at it. He's gone. Leg got him. Murray leg, blitzing safety coming from the blind side, and he gets Yusina. It is that kind of a play where your quarterback can really get clobbered, but uh, Leg didn't really get a solid hit. That's the fourth sack, and Alabama's defense now has nailed the Penn State quarterback for 60 yards and losses. There's Leg, number 19, coming from the right side of your screen on a safety blitz, unblocked. And Fitz get a punch. Pretty good kick. Going to run Lou Eichner well back to the 27. Look at here. Turn and great, great, great downfield blocking by the Alabama football team. Watch this blocking form and then watch Eichner use it. That's one of the prettiest plays in football. 
get to the wall. He gets Bucky pick up the blockers on the right, set up his block right here, cutting back inside, picking up blockers. Alabama Red Church makes another man miss him. Finally, Bradley, number eight, number 63, brings him down. 62-yard return of the punt. Byron Braggs, that big tackle, was downfield and really made a big block. So Lou Ackner takes a breather, and it's first down Alabama at the Penn State 11-yard line. Big play. Whistle and flag. The cause of that was Rutledge changing the play at the line. Bunch got a little anxious, number 63. <laughs> oh, I don't blame him. That takes you right out of your game plan. First and 10, first and 15 is a big difference close to the goal line. Tony Nathan getting definition of the penalty from the referee, Bill Jennings. And the ball is back at the 16-yard line, first down and 15. Rutledge keeping and turns it right into a stack at the 15-yard line. Kind of an interesting little piece of side action going over there on the sidelines where Neal, the tight end, had cut down Gilson and the defensive back. And it could well be that if uh, Jeff had gone that way, he'd have had some room. Well, they mark it back outside the 15 at the 16. Second down is still about 15. That's major. Student body right, he's inside the 10 to about the 9. Running behind solid blocking is Major Ogilvy and Steve Whitman really threw a couple of cut down blocks for it. Time winding down now with less than a minute to play in the third quarter. That was a good call right there, Keith. They had no luck with a wishbone where they get in penetration. They just turn and pitch the ball, get outside of those crashing linemen, and make a big play. Ball is very near the 8 yard line. Rick Neal. Tim Travis, pair of tight ends in there on third down and seven. Rutledge just missed by Millen behind the line of scrimmage with Ogilvy. Touchdown. Major Ogilvy takes it in from the eight-yard line and Alabama is back on top. to say Alabama's poise has been restored keep by that 62 yard punt return by Lou Eichner and here's Alan McElroy for the extra point try it is good no flags it'll stand 21 seconds to go in the third quarter and Alabama regains the lead 14 to 7 okay. Dave, here's the touchdown. Watch Millen on the left of your screen and see if he doesn't nearly comes close to tackling Rutledge before he gets started, but the key block is made by Neal, number eight, down the field right here. You'll see him in the, come in the corner of your screen right up here, make the block, and keep Gilston back in the secondary, allowing Ogilvy to go in for the touchdown. Boy, he is a hard-running sophomore, too. He is determined to get into that end zone line. So McElroy will now kick it off in Penn State. We'll send Donovan in the center as the deepest man. Joel Cole, a freshman out of Pittsburgh, who's very swift, is also back there, along with Matt Suey. The short man is uh, Bob Torrey, the fullback. Donovan's a man who wants to get the ball. Way back in the end zone, I don't think he'll come, no. The Penn State first down at the 20-yard line as whistle stop. The players on the field and the Penn State offensive unit comes in. 21 seconds remaining. There's the Alabama scoring drive. And uh, again, uh, let's remember that this touchdown was set up by Lou Eichner with a marvelous return. And he made the long run simply because his path was so well blocked. He had a beautiful wall to get over and get to. And then when he got there, he made two beautiful cuts to take it deeper into the towards the goal line. Matt Shoy and Booker Moore are lined up behind Chuck Fusina. Moore with the ball. He cannot get outside as E.J. Jr. in the ball game. He's 
Not going to play a whole lot, I don't think, because he's, he's really banged up. Very sore groin pull, but he made that play all right. And time winding down after three quarters of play in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama 14, Penn State 7. Paying your monthly bills can be a monthly hassle. The changing fortunes of this game, it is now Alabama that is the happy side as Penn State is looking at second down and 11 from their 19-yard line on the first play of the final quarter. Alabama is leading by score of 14 to 7. They reverse it to Donovan, the flanker. Donovan gets back to the line of scrimmage where Marty Lyons and Byron Braggs are there to greet him. Now let's go back to that beautiful blocked run by Lou Eichner, a 62-yard punt return that set up the go-ahead touchdown for the Tigers. When you get over to the boundary and pick up your blockers, that was Braggs, number 47. 50 is Scott, the good fine linebacker. He cuts back inside. You get the defense trying to cut you off, and when you cut back, you have a chance to get free. Finally, the tackle is brought, made by Bradley. On third and 11, Fusina will throw. Chuck's in trouble, and he is thrown. Thrown down by John Morrow, another of those uh, half hole defensive ends who doesn't feel a thing right now. The sack is all the way back to near the 10-yard line. And with 14 minutes to play in the football game, Alabama is going to get the ball back, and they're going to get very good field position out of it. Eichner is standing deep to receive the punt from Scott Pitsky. Takes it at the 47. Gets three yards on the return. 36-yard punt by Pitsky, and that's just right on his average. And here are the third quarter numbers. Of course, we can see that Alabama is way ahead offensively, 245 yards total to 95 for Penn State. Amazing thing is 162 yards rushing. They've had excellent field position most of the football game. Two turnovers apiece. Eight yards rushing by Penn State. That's unbelievable. 95 yards and three quarters total. Wow. First down. From the 43-yard line, there's a penalty flag thrown by the referee in the Alabama backfield. That almost always means one of two things, motion, procedure, or offensive hold. Penn State has their backs to the wall right there. Procedure, Red Club. All right, procedure. They must stop them from scoring. I would expect them to get into blitzes. Blitzing defense is something to try to give Alabama a bad play and get the ball back. They're going to walk off five from the 43 back to near the 48, or uh, the 49. Let's see, right in between. Illegal procedure. One. This club. All right. It'll be first down and 15. 68 yards have been lost now on five sacks by the Penn State quarterback. There's the penalty story. Nathan runs out of room down around the 45-yard line. Ken Donahue is the man who normally would have the chore of putting the defensive game plan together. I'm sure that he led the thinking and planning on it, but I would also think that everybody participated in it. It is was it's just marvelously conceived by the Alabama staff. Kept Penn State off balance. The entire ball game. Nathan closing in on 100 yards now. He has 93 and 12 carries from the 45. There's penalty flags all over the place. I think Jim Bunch might have moved on the right side. See Matt Millen, number 60, in there with his armor. <laughs> Jeff Rutledge's neck. Bunch wanted to get a jump on Clark. He was, <laughs> he was blocking Clark man for man on pass protection. It looked like he wanted to get him before Clark got started, and he jumped the count. A little early. Oh, Bear's mad now. Guess you wonder why Bear's not wearing his hat. Well, he's indoors, and his mother told him never to wear his hat in the house. <laughs> Illegal procedure, 63 on a red. So it was Bunch who did move, gets the illegal procedure flag. The ball is now backed up to the 50-yard line. It is second down and 17, and the ball is handed in the middle to Billy Jackson. He bangs off the stack, goes down about the 49-yard line. 
That stack was led by Lance Mel, linebacker. Here comes a play in from the sidelines with a fullback Whitman coming in, and Jackson comes out. Billy lost a shoe. That's probably why he's coming out. Keith Pugh is out as well, and Bolton is in at a wide receiver spot now on third down and about 16. Rutledge back, looks for Bolton, goes instead to Neal, and Neal is thrown down at the 40-yard line, short of the first down, and over there to make the play is number 28, Rich Mallott, who's already made one big, big defensive play for Penn State, though the Lions were unable to convert it into any points. Alabama's in the eye formation, the fake off tackle, the tight end goes down and out, the linebacker, Mallott, the strong safety, 28, has him man for man, he's a little bit behind in completion, but not enough for a first down. Right near the 40-yard line now, Umphrey to punt. You've got two men deep for Penn State. Woody just knuckles it up there, hits it out of bounds. He didn't get much on it, really, and uh, he knocks it out uh, way up field. So they'll mark it for you, and we'll be right back with 12-21 to play in the game. Chevy Truck's massive girder beam suspension system. Built tough to ride smooth. The heart is a massive girder beam with steel control arms that flex up and down, allowing wheels to step up and down independently over bumps and ruts to help smooth the ride. Chevy Truck's massive girder beam suspension. Built to take it year after year. It's the stuff tough trucks are made of. Chevy Trucks. Built to stay tough. Who'd ever believe it? What? What a star you were. Those touchdown passes and those game-saving catches and those baskets at the buzzer. My games don't need me anymore. Well, we've got some games that do. Make the best of your recreation time with AMF. We make Roadmaster bicycles and mopeds, sunfish sailboats, head tennis rackets, skis, and sportswear. We make weekends. And weekends were made for comebacks. For the 18th consecutive year, it's the best in professional bowling. Premiering January 6th on ABC, the Pro Bowlers Tour. In the Cotton Bowl, Houston has run off to a 15-point lead over Notre Dame in the third quarter. Davis making it 27-12 on a two-yard run. Penn State now, that was a nine-yard punt by Humphrey. It's first down Penn State at the first. Matt Suey. Runs it up to the 37-yard line. There, it looked like Don McNeil got a hold of it, number 28. That's who's getting up. I'll tell you, Suey is 211 pounds, and he's a tough guy. Boy, he runs hard, and he will really stop that time. There's the stat stats again. Penn State only five yards rushing through three and quarters. A little over. It's net. Second down, and it's Booker Moore. Diving for the first down out beyond the 40 to the 41 where Rich Wingo and Rich is a well-known linebacker for Alabama, but he got knee in the back and he's had uh, spasms and nerve troubles with it for the half the season. But he's in there right now. Barry Cross comes out and uh, no, Mandy Scott comes out and Barry Cross goes in at linebacker now. Cross is the emotional leader. He fires up the defense. 41-yard line, first down line. 14 to 7, Alabama. 11:35 to play in the ball game. Booker Moore runs it up the middle, and they're finding a little more daylight here all of a sudden in the middle of the Alabama defense as he comes up near the 46-yard line. The best way to help your pass protection, Keith, is to establish some running game, and that's what Penn State seems to be doing right here, running up the middle as much as possible to slow down that rush. Lions came in with a 19-game winning streak. There have been many memorable winning streaks stopped in postseason play. One of the longer ones, Oklahoma's 31-game streak back in Kentucky in the Sugar Bowl in 1951. You've seen it. Gives to Moore. Look at that defensive play by E.J. Jr., number 39. Wow. He's on his tummy, and he reached up and knocked him down. Moore, that was a great play by Junior, but Moore should have seen that. He had the ball deep in the backfield, and she cut away from it, go back up inside. He chose to go outside, and Junior made a sensational play. Let's watch it again. Number 32 on the right of the screen. Sue throwing the block on Junior. Has him blocked, but Moore goes, tries to go outside when he had some soft daylight inside. It's third down at eight. 
you've seen his pass to the sidelines complete to Goomen, and he's beyond the marker for a first down. So the Lions stay alive with a first down at the Alabama 47-yard line. If that was the same pass pattern they threw to Goomen over on the corner to set up their touchdown. Fake, they with a double wing right there. Goomen goes right in behind the trailing split in. He's open momentarily. You've seen us right on target. Jim Bob Harris making the tackle. If he had overrun him just a little bit, he'd had quite a bit of room down that sideline. First down lines, Alabama 47. Deep drop over the middle, complete. The pass is caught by Brad Scoble, number 80. Brad Scoble, who made a couple of big plays in Penn State's victory over Ohio State early in the season. Keith, I've been wondering when they were going to their tight ends, firing the linebackers, rushing them. The tight end is usually open in the middle. That time he was for a big play. They all move right now. 29-yard line of Alabama. First down, Penn State. Booker Moore. Well, there isn't anything over there. E.J. Jr., that defensive end, had put himself in exactly the right place, and he was just waiting. He accepted Booker Moore with... Uh, Howdy. DJ Jr.'s had a full hamstring, hadn't been able to practice for two or three days, and that's reason he hadn't played too much in his ball game. But he Warren, made two sensational plays. Warren Lyles, the Alabama nose guard, who started, also has a little hamstring trouble. That loss is uh, back to the 34 yard line. It's second down and 16. Fusina on a deep drop going to the corner. Bassett's over there. It is. Incomplete. No, intercepted by McNeil. And Alabama will bring it out to the 20. Double coverage. Bob Jim Bob Harris and Don McNeil going down, and they slam the door. Here it is again. You can see Bassett going on the fly pattern, but I hope the camera will show how wide open Fitzky is down the middle. But here is McNeil, number 28, and Harris, the safety, both over on the play. Of course, Harris has his hands on it, but then... McNeil comes down with it. That is the third interception of Chuck Fusina in the ball game. 9-18 to play in the ball game. Alabama leading 14-7. They have the ball first down at the 20. I can tell by the happy mood you're in, by that ever widening grin. There's good news on your face, and it comes from only one place. lot to make an investor happy today, but at Dean Witter, with our investment services, our research, and above all, our people, we think we can make you happy, too. You look like you just Alabama bench now as McNeil sits on there with his defensive teammates exulting in a moment of good play. And it's first down, Bama, at the 20. Those will be coming out to the right, leaving Alabama in an eye formation. Give the ball to Tony Nathan. Play on Nathan. Hugh is out at wide receiver. Bolton comes in for Alabama. And for the tide, it is third down and five with 8-11 to play. Total yards in the game reflected there. Time called with 8.03 to go in this ball game. Rutledge comes to the sideline to talk. In this world of the ordinary, there is a remarkable nasal spray that lasts and lasts up to 12 continuous hours. Duration. Duration nasal spray relieves up to 12 continuous hours. 
Duration relieves nasal stuffiness and sinus congestion. So just one use lets you work all day. Just one use lets you sleep all night. Duration relieves up to 12 continuous hours. Duration with the longest lasting nasal decongestant. Hey, Mr. Goodwrench, it's only hitting on seven. <laughs> Better give me a complete tune-up. Better let me check it out first. You don't want to pay for anything you don't need. When you want your GM car fixed, see Mr. Goodwrench at your participating GM dealers. He cares. All it needed was this little fuel filter element. A lot cheaper than a tune-up. All right. Keep that great GM feeling. With Mr. Goodwrench. My man. And genuine GM parts. Penn State's Chuck Fusina, UCLA's Theodos Brown, Charles Alexander of LSU, postseason action on the Hula Bowl, Saturday on ABC. Time becoming a big factor in this ball game. Still a lot of it, 8.03, but Chuck Fusina, so far, it's been a pretty long day. Alabama right now on third and five. Rutledge, oh, oh, Penn State's got it. Penn State's got it at the 19-yard line. Joe Lally, number 84. Ball was loose off the ground. It was a very bad pitch by Rutledge as he was under pressure and couldn't get it to his back. Let's watch again on this play. It's the high formation option, triple option. Watch Rutledge. Should he pitch the ball? He pitched it before he got to the defensive end. And, of course, Lally is right there, 84, Suey number 65, recover a big play. First down at the Alabama 19-yard line. Matt Suey runs it up the middle, tears his way inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. What a turnaround in the ball game. Alabama leading 14-7. to Turn the ball over to Penn State. And Suey on the first play over the right side behind Brown, Romano. Goes hammering inside the 10 and looks like he's got it first and goal. He Look does. at the blockings. A little trap play right there. Double team in the nose, man. So he had a nice opening. Big play. Get good game. First and goal to go from the eight of Alabama. Double wide to the left of Penn State. Ball is pitched to Kuman. Kuman turns it back up in the middle and gets to the six-yard line. As the Alabama defense was moving quickly to the play. And Marty Lyons, 93, and Ricky Gilliland, 92. Chief, if they do score, Penn State cannot afford a high form at pass, so will they go for two? Gilliland dragging an arm, coming out, going in to replace him. Number 36, Rich Wingo. Nine, there. What a turnover that was. Alabama's had only one first down in this half, so the Penn State defense continues to play very, very well. The offense started to come alive. Second down and goal to go from the six. Fusina on a roll to the right. Puts it up. It is good. Fitzky. And he is knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. And I want to tell you something, folks. There was one whale of a defensive play by Alabama's Don McNeil because Fitzky has momentum and McNeil just won't let him come in. Number 46, Fitzky is playing right out. Watch Neal, who is playing the deep man, come up and make the play. He's not even covering. Fitzky, number 28, makes a sensational play to prevent the touchdown. So it is third and goal to go at the one-yard line. Crowd roaring. Bill Jennings doesn't even wait for Fusina to step away. He can hear the crowd too, and he just stops it right there because he's entitled to have his team hear him call the count. 6-5-7 to go in the ball game, and Penn State trying to tie the score right here. You if we get down, Frank, into the late moments and Penn State has any kind of field position at all, Matt Barr becomes such an important factor. So they may just kick it tied up right here. Suey and Goodman. He didn't make it. He got about a half of it. Krauss and McGriff, primarily the people. Could be the ball of wax right here. Fourth and goal, time for Penn State. 
will be very deliberate about the circumstances. They may not have another opportunity quite like this. Six minutes and 44 seconds to play in this big, big, big ball game. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking light beer from Miller. See, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's middle discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. Oh, no, this is... Yeah, no, wait, well, this is... No, no, wait a minute. Light like beer from Miller. Everything you always want in a beer and less. I feel my label. We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. You sure are getting behind Chevy's new mid-size Malibu, American. And why not? It's got the right mileage estimates, the right size, the right feel, the right look, and the right room. And for a lot of folks, it's got the right name, too. Chevy Malibu. The 79 Chevy Malibu could be just right for you. A fresh new slice of apple pie called Chevy Malibu. The yard mark in the Sugar Bowl shows a half a yard to go for the touchdown and the possibility of tying or going ahead for Penn State. 19-game win streak, only undefeated team in the country, ranked number one in the nation, Alabama ranked number two. Everything could be hanging on fourth and goal with a half a yard. Gooman. Stopped him short. So it is Barry Krause who is shaken and down on the field right now. Keith, the turnover went by formation on that last call, took the ball deep in the backfield, as you said, to allow Gooman to jump. But what happens on the goal line defense? The linemen are penetrating, the linebackers won't stop it. Let's see it right here. The linebacker Krause, number 77, has got to make the tackle on the back, diving across the goal line. Sensational play and maybe prevented. Penn State from winning the national championship. Krause ran off the field. So he went head on with Gooman and took a solid shot, but he got the job done. That's what he'll remember as the years go by. Alabama out of the end zone. And the play moves out to about the five before the running back, Tony Nathan, is brought down. And there's Barry Krause now, who's collecting his wits after that hit. Still a little groggy, looks like. Keith, I don't know that I can remember a more dramatic situation than we had. Two downs to make a foot. Kyle go ahead in the football game for the national championship. Alabama on second down and uh, six. Penn State defense trying to pin Alabama deep down here so that they can force Bama to punt and get the ball in good field position as we go inside six minutes to play. Didn't you show the film to half of Ara Parsegian throwing a pass right here in the same, right through the same situation, hitting the key pass and winning the ball game for Notre Dame and upsetting Alabama? Robin Weber. Third down and about five. They stay on the ground and don't get the first down. So the Penn State defense does the job, and Alabama will have to punt it from the end zone, and the Lions shouldn't be any worse than midfield. Still plenty of time. Clock running at 5.20 to go in the game. The Penn State defense stopped them again as they have most of this football game. The offense has not made any yardage, has not been able to make any consistent drives. They've been playing most of the ball game. Humphreys had a pretty good day punting, had one bad one for nine yards. Oh, it bounces back to him. And he gets a ball out of there, and there's a penalty flag. 
flag thrown way, way back up field by the back judge. Would you believe there are 12 men on the field? Who? By Penn State. Oh, hello. And that is 15 yards, if that is what I think it is. They were counting. 92 did not know whether he was to get off the field or not. He's showing his hand, so he's the one. That's what it is. Joe Paterno in the Orange Bowl profited from Kansas having 12 men on the field to win a ball game. Here, the law of averages finally catches up, I guess. I don't know what it is. Fate, call it what you want. Indecision, confusion, but it will give Alabama a first down. Uh, it's a 15-yard penalty when you play with 12 men. If one's trying to get off the field, it's only a five-yard penalty. Penn State would have had the ball in Alabama territory, but they really we never... Got 12 men on the field on the white trophy. So it may very well have cost Penn State the national championship. Let's see if the defense can come back and stop them one more time. They've still got time if they can make them the tango offense three times and punt. Marking off the penalty, which brings the ball way upfield. All the way out to the 22-yard line. Penn State players stunned. That's two big breaks in the kicking game. One on the punt return by Eichner that set up the go-ahead touchdown. And as we said earlier, breaks in the kicking game stun your football team. It, it gives them dispirit. makes them dispiriting. While we're waiting for the punt, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. In Birmingham, this is TV6. Didn't say if we're going to punt, they're going to run the ball. Just run it and run it and run it. Block goes now with the snap of the ball at 5.03. An incredible turnaround. Nathan runs it. Out to the 28, close to the 29. Alabama turns it over. Penn State gets it a half a yard away from the goal line. Two plays to take it in. Can't do it. Then Alabama's punting. Penn State figures to get the ball no worse than midfield. Penn State gets caught with 12 men on the field. 15-yard penalty gives Alabama the first down. The score is 14 to 7, and the clock is running at four and a half minutes to play in the game. That's Major Overwood. Every time an Alabama back progresses up the field, this great huge building roars with this record crowd of more than 76,000 watching. Major Ogilvy made a key cut on that play. He was going outside, he saw a little daylight, and when he turned up field key, he looked like a truck going down. 76,824, which is a new Superdome Sugar Bowl record. First down, Alabama, as the ball is advanced to the 34-yard line. Nathan. Daylight on the right side as he got some solid blocking to turn that corner. And Pete Harris, the safety, made the stop for Penn State. Penn State could not have played the play any better, but Nathan set up his block, faking inside. He broke out and picked up four or five vital yards. Nathan now, 18 carries and 115 yards. He's got to be in the running for the MVP. Exactly four minutes to play in the game. Four minutes. It is second down at the 39-yard line and five to go. Penalty flag thrown to the referee in the Alabama backfield. So that may be a flag against the tie. Procedure, Alabama. And look at the bear crowd. Oh, my goodness. Alabama tried to run on a quick count, and uh, all 11 players were not set for one second. He sends Adelette back in the ball game. McCombs comes out. Ball has moved back five yards to the 34, where it is second down. He ought to put it up. Second down and 10. Rutledge. Oh! He kept 
kept it. And Kubin, defensive end, Larry Kubin, got him. That's Chuck Fusina on the sidelines, anxiously watching, hoping. That's all he can do right now is hope. And you see the time winding away, definitely the friend of Alabama. Watch Rutledge on this particular play. Larry Kubin, number 74. He wasn't going to pitch it because last time he, it was a fumble, and also Millett was right in the line of fire. Whistle, whistle, and it stopped. Again, it's a procedure call against Alabama. That's the second one in this possession. Three minutes and 20 seconds to play in the football game. Bill Jennings takes the ball back to the 29-yard line. It is now third down and 15. Alabama's been hit with 10 flags for 70 yards. Imagine they'll just run some safe play, maybe giving the ball to Nathan, who has a chance to pop it for the big play, then punt it and see what Penn State can do with it. Up the middle, out to about the 34. Fullback Whitman. Now they send on the punting team. And I'll bet you one thing, they count all the white shirts this time. Well, they got a big decision whether it will look like they're moving back for the return. Suey and Gooman are the deep men. No pressure. Beautiful kick by Oprah. Oh, it's a dandy. Gooman throws it across the field, trying to get a man to the sideline, and it doesn't work for it. He threw it over to Scott Hettinger, who had come back, and he threw that wide lateral across the field, and very alertly, Randy Scott, I believe it was, had uh, come down to protect that side of the field. And Woody Humphrey with a beautiful 45-yard high-hanging kick, his ninth of the ball game, and Penn State is back at the 21. The kicking has been a key factor for Alabama's field position, which may, has made Penn State play a more conservative offense in most of the ball game. With 2.42 to play in the game, Penn State does have the ball and still with the opportunity. Let's see what they can do with it. That may cost him five yards. Back judge throws his flag, and when he does that, his little buzzer goes off on that timer, and it's too much time, five yards against Penn State. Joe Fields, very frustrating afternoon. Things have not gone right for him. 2.42, it's first down and 15. Penn State from the 16-yard line. Fusina looking to throw it. Goes to the right side, pass caught. The pass is complete for a first down to Scott Fitzke on the sidelines. Clock is frozen at 2.36. And once again, Fusina zipped the ball. Fisky number 46 pushes as if he's going deep, turns right back to the sideline. The ball is right on target as Fusini, Fusini rifle that ball right there. 92, Gidlin, come, Gidlin comes in, makes the play. Chuck has had a much better second half, 9 out of 14 for 108 yards. From the 32, Fusini to put it up again. Throws it short this time to Mike Gooman, and Gooman doubled up by E.J. Jr. and Wayne Hamilton, the defensive ends who had peeled off to cover that short zone. The gain is out to about the 37, and there's the time. The national championship riding right here. If Penn State could pull it out, almost surely they would get it. It would be the first one ever for Penn State. If Alabama wins its football game, suddenly USC, Oklahoma become big factors in the voting. That'll come next week. The pass intended for Donovan is incomplete. Barry Krause, linebacker, had dropped back and he slapped it away. That was a sensational effort by Krause. Watch Casino. He's trying to throw back over the middle, and Krause gets a good break on the ball. Watch how far he can go. Number 77, right in front of the receiver, and gets his head up, knocks it incomplete. The ball is still sitting near the 37-yard line where it is third down and six. 
third and six, 159 to play. This could be it. It's a screen to Duma. He's covered. He breaks it outside. He dives for the marker. He doesn't get it. He's going to be short of the first down. They've got to go. With 150 to play, they will have to go on fourth and short. Keith, they gave him a pretty good spot. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, they did, didn't they? There's an Alabama man down on the field. They advanced it a little farther than I thought perhaps they might on that play. It may be a first down. And it's Don McNeil who has made two big plays in this football game, including an interception in the end zone. He's the man down on the field for Alabama. Bryant looking out, terribly concerned, because he's had to go in this ball game without his uh, regular free safety, Ricky Tucker. That will further weaken their secondary. Puts more inexperience back there. It is a first down for Penn State. They gave him a good spot on the ball as uh, Gooman is a big lanky fellow and very strong and at the point of impact he apparently just lunged ahead through the crowd and he got just enough for the first down. McNeil coming off the field rather gingerly. With a passer like you've seen it you always have a chance. We've seen it this year at Southern Cal Notre Dame what can happen when you have a pass. All right let's check the Alabama secondary. That's where the pressure points are going to be Murray leg Jim Bob Harris Alan Crumby and you know that the two linebackers Krause and Wingo are going to be dropping to protect the shorter zones. It could be that we'll see that same play uh, with Pitsky lining up at a tight end which puts a linebacker in position to cover him. That's how they got their touchdown. 150 to play in the ball game. Penn State to have any hope of a national championship, they've got to pull it out. Otherwise, out several teams claiming it. You've seen a back to throw on first down. Throws to the sideline. The pass is caught by Gooman. And Gooman fights his way down to the Alabama 44 yard line with 138 to play. That is another first down. As they move the chains and Penn State's in a hurry, that gained 14 yards. That's all there's left. 138. Number one, Penn State, trailing number two, Alabama, by a score of 14 to 7. Fusina rolls and throws. The pass is caught by Brad Scoble. Tumbles out of bounds. Saves time at the Alabama 41. I wonder if Alabama will change their defensive strategies. They have defended with three men rushing on each of these plays. Will they change up and put the big rush on that they had so much success with all th throughout this ball game? Well, they're, they're, they're playing center field now. Alabama signaling they want a timeout. And right now, uh, the tide will take time as Cross called it. And we'll go talk to his coach, and I'm sure that that's what they're going to talk about is how to play their defense. Alabama with one timeout remaining in the game. One minute, 32 seconds left to play in the game. Those are the numbers on Chuck Fusina in the ball game in this half. He's 13 out of 19 for 135 yards and a touchdown. He's been intercepted, however, three times. It's second down and seven from the Alabama 41. 1.30 to play now as Fusina rolls out, throws the ball, and threw it away. He dumped it. 128 to play in the game. Marty Lyons and Byron Braggs were hunting him and Frank. They went back to what had been so successful for him. Absolutely. Defense. Bear called timeout and says, hey, man, we're going after him. And they did. But you see, they had to get rid of the ball to prevent a big loss. <clears throat> in this kind of a defensive play, though, they do stretch out the so-called short zone area because the uh, deep people are playing way back. Let's see. 128 to play. Third down and seven. Yusina goes deep with it. Goble is out there and can't get it. Brad Scoble, number 80, going on a post deep. Let's watch him. Let, let's watch Scoble and see if you, anybody thinks it's interference. Number 19 leg right there. See what he does. Scoble is in behind him momentarily. But the ball is overthrown, but he trips him right there. That's close. Yep. It is fourth down Penn State, seven yards to go, 122 to play in the game. Alabama leads 14 to 7. You know the story. You know the history. Go, go, go. Lincoln. 
deep they say Murray Leg is always Johnny on the spot, and I believe him. choice as to when they're going to call the timeout. Nathan breaks out of there. And Tony Nathan runs out to the 48-yard line for seven yards and now goes the Colonel, calls the time. One more look at what might have been Penn State's last offensive play of the season. That's it, number 81, going, curling back to the inside. Let's see leg number 19. The break on the ball by leg is just sensational. He was behind him, but when the ball got to the receiver, he was in front to break it up. That's okay. an All-American play. Matter there of not re not so much the receiver trying to catch it, but prevent leg from intercepting and running it back up field. Noble had a little push on him, didn't he? In 1969, Penn State beat Kansas with a two-point conversion late in the game, 15-14. Penn State benefited from the 12th man on the field, but here in this memorable Sugar Bowl game, they were hurt by the 12th man on the field. You see now the gloom beginning to settle in a little bit now on the Penn State side of the field. 102 to play in the ball game. Alabama just trying to sit on it. They've got a second down and two. Up near the 49. A major over the carries it. He's held just short of midfield, so there'll be a yard short of uh, a first down. And we're inside a minute to play. And the Memorial Trophy awarded to the outstanding player, the MVP award, in effect, has been chosen. Barry Krause of Alabama. Made the sensational tackle, fourth down and a foot. As Gooman tried to leap, go airborne for the touchdown, he hit him head up with his helmet right on the numbers and pushed him back. But he's played sensational all day long, particularly rushing the passer. It's been a tremendous football game. Just a tremendous football game. down a yard for the first down. Nathan is held short of the first down. It'll be fourth and one. Penn State with no more timeouts remaining. Can't stop the clock. Now's the time they'll have to go for the block. I would think if, if Alabama is going to put the ball, their only chance would be to block it and pick it up and score with it. Block is running. 40 seconds to play. They'll take a five-yard penalty here. Don't bother anybody to back them up fine. There it goes. So precious. All you tell your kicker here is catch it, watch it in, and kick it with as fast the footwork as you possibly can. A year ago in the Cotton Bowl, Notre Dame came from fifth position in the regular season bowl. There's your flag for the five-yard penalty. That'll stop the clock with 19 seconds. Notre Dame was ranked fifth, beat number one Texas, wound up in the final postseason bowl, number one. We'll figure in the final balloting. Those are the Rose Bowl, where USC's playing Michigan, and the Orange Bowl, where Oklahoma's playing Nebraska. All skitters back to Woody Humphrey. They make the run at the block. It's a poor kick. He goes out of bounds with 12 seconds to play. So Penn State's going to get at least one playoff, maybe two. 12 kicks remaining. Eric Krauss is the first lineman to get the MVP award of the Sugar Bowl since 1956. And you think that Penn State has been averaging close to 400 yards in offense and could not move the ball against an Alabama team that some of the opponents this year had had much success. You give the defensive coaches and staff tremendous credit for designing that defense. 
way back before the first game was played in the preseason poll, major polls had Alabama picked. They're close, if not there, when it's all done. Over the middle, it goes, and it's up there. the fourth interception by Alabama and there are people all over the field. So it's going to take a while to either run off the clock and forget it or try to hang on and run one more play. See him come pouring down out of the stands and out onto the field. Relatively academic. Paul Bear Bryant who has won four national championships Conceivably, has won his fifth. Have to wait until all the poll voting is done, really, to know that all the games have been played. You don't necessarily get the national championship because you uh, finished the season undefeated. Joe Paterno's done that four times, he didn't get it. 1966 in the 767 bowls, for example, Alabama beat Nebraska 34 to 7 in the Sugar Bowl game. Finished the year 11 and 0, but Notre Dame and Michigan State finished the. Uh, ranked ahead of them. And we lost the national championship with Alabama beat uh, Nebraska uh, one year after we had uh, been undefeated through the season. Penn State's 19 game win streak, longest among the Division I A teams, about to come to an end. And once again, Penn State is denied a national title. I think Alabama's played like national championships. Yes, I, I would say they played like national championships. Offensively, defensively, boys, they got a tough break and when Penn State tied the game up, but they came right back with an outstanding punt return, went in and scored, and they have been able to play great defense the rest of the game. The defense that Alabama has shown us today, Frank, is just, just marvelous. Right? Well, it's brilliant. Been, been sensational. Uh, Bill Olive, the defensive coach, said they could not cover Penn State in the zone. They were going to have to rush and put... A lot of pressure on Cena and their game plan worked to perfection. Joe is going to be turned aside one more time as he hunts elusive number one. That's your last play of the ball game. It is over. Alabama has defeated Penn State by a score of 14 to 7. Alabama has won six times in the Sugar Bowl. The bear goes for a ride. As Joe Paterno comes into that melee trying to find Paul Bryant to shake his head. Well, you just hate in a game like this to see anybody lose. Both teams, outstanding squads, tremendous young men. This news will ring with clarity through at least two locker rooms. One in Pasadena and one in Miami. They'll play 10 points better because of this upset of Penn State. Both teams on the West Coast and of course Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. I don't mean to suggest either that Michigan wouldn't be in a position to do some arguing about a national championship if they handled the Trojans from Southern Cal in the Rose Bowl. I concur. So there is no undefeated team in Division 1A in 1978, just as there were none in 1977. When it was all done, only Texas went into a postseason bowl game. Notre Dame beat them. Penn State comes in undefeated. Alabama beats them. We will have the trophy presentation. Jim Lampley will cover it for you right now. It's an Alabama story, and it's going to be an Alabama party tonight that is going to make this old town jump.